Welcome into the Cam and Strick Podcast, episode number 269, baby. Fueled by First Form. Yoink. Cam. That's a Christmas yoink to all y'all out there, Ooh. baby. Feliz Navidad. Christmas yoink. Merry Christmas to all you guys. You know, uh, this is going to be put out tomorrow, but this is our Christmas week, so I just want to give a little shout out to not to the blue collar folk, which Andy doesn't like me talking about that, but the guys during Christmas, the moms and dads out there that bust their, us, bust their butt, living paycheck to paycheck, and all they want to do is just ha- see their kids have a smile on their face on mm. Christmas Day, yeah. even though they just went through hell, they're in debt. They're probably fighting the whole time during this holiday because it's uh, so stressful. But you guys, you got it together, and you're going to see your kids enjoy Christmas. So I'm going to give you a little shout-out. Yeah. Merry Christmas to all uh, you Merry guys. Christmas uh, to all y'all. And uh, hit me up in private message. I'll send you. And Cameo. My Cameos are always open if you want a happy holiday greeting for this holiday season. Uh, do you know finances are the number one cause of divorce? God, yeah. Absolutely, No, man. did you know that? Uh, I knew that was up there, but um, I remember my parents fighting about money. It was the worst thing in the world, man. Mm-hmm. I remember them, and that's why I meant to say that. It's like I remember my parents fighting so much, and you could just see, and you're like, oh, God, because it was so stressful during Christmas. But my mom and dad wouldn't even buy themselves anything. They'd buy themselves like $5 pairs of slippers for, for Christmas, but they got to sit down on Christmas Day, have their coffee, and watch us open up fucking gifts, and it was such a cool thing for them, man. So all you blue collar. People out there, man, it's 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 a it's a tough holiday. It's a stressful holiday, and I just want to give a shout out. Well, because let me just explain. And he doesn't hang out with blue collar people, so he doesn't know what the hell (laughs) I'm talking about. That's not true. That's not true. All y'all. I I relate to everybody, to be honest with you. You know, driving. Kim, do you know know that uh, Christmas has become so commercialized over the years, where the pressure on uh, on everybody, and especially those like you said, where things are tight. Yeah. And the pressure to have to deliver on Christmas is so excessive. And for a lot of people, it's unrealistic. And um, it's it, it, it can put, it, honestly, it can kind of put you into a holiday hole. Did and you know that's that? That's why I just brought that up. Yeah, man. my voice is a little, dude, I'm not feeling well today. So for. You never feel. No, I just got to. Put that. Just for today. Dude. Don't, don't play with me on this. Why? Because I can't hear you. And you and look you like can, a buffoon. You can hear me. You look like a buffoon. You just talked on that mic, dude. You just got your germs on that. If you got COVID, you already put it I in the fucking mic, I didn't say I have COVID. Dude. Then what do you have? This is for everybody. You this would is for wear everybody. a mask. Listen, my... You know who wears masks? Criminals. Is that true? Yeah. They wear masks. This is for your safety. Whenever they run into Walgreens and they loot the place, they have masks on. Not because of COVID. Because they're criminals. You look like a fool. You know? You do. You look like a fool. And I can't hear you. And you're like, you're muffled. You know what I mean? Now stop. it's fogging up stop. my glasses. See, I know you're it's putting on that. Yeah, get it off. Good God, stop. It's fogging up my glasses. But you know what, man? I hey, am, I saw a, a I'm woman feeling today. it this time of year, though, no, right now. This is the time of year when I always get Because you got three a kids, man, and you're at the weather. rink all the time, Andy, yeah. and you're traveling. You're at the yeah. Blues games all the time and stuff yeah. like that. You're, you're exposed to a lot of bacteria. But I remember seeing a, a lady today. I go to the same gas station every morning, and this lady's been wearing a mask for two years. Two years she's been wearing a mask. And she finally took it off. Out this where morning. you live? No, it's it's closer to the radio station. Oh. Yeah, not out by me. But um, I finally saw her face for the first time. Oh. I go, I go. Well, there's a beautiful smile. Like I've never seen your smile. Didn't even know. I she wouldn't even know who like. you were. No. It just shows like you put those down. And I know at the beginning they're right, but you put those on like you have no idea what somebody looks like. You don't know their facial expressions. You don't know if they're happy or sad or anything. It's such a weird thing. I saw her for the first time without a mask, and I'm like, "Wow, she's beautiful." Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes there's a reason to wear one, and uh, it can it can you know to help for safety for everybody. No, I, but I, I, no. I, I, hey, no, listen, they don't work. When my son good. first started playing hockey, there yeah. were like people in the locker room who had masks on, and I didn't see what they looked like for a full year. Yeah, you have no idea. I had no idea. You can't see their emotion or and, expressions. You know, listen, a lot of listen. I I get it, man. I get it. We don't see too many people. You get what wearing masks today? We don't see that a whole lot. I still in see my it. neighborhood. I I I saw a girl, this poor girl, like, a uh, young girl, I, and I, I have such a long drive in the morning, you know, and I just, just see the same thing over and over throughout this. I go the same way every time. And this girl who's like 20, 21 years old, she's jogging in the mornings, like 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh, not with, safe. With two masks on. How do you know? Because I see her. It's dark out. Dude, I could see what she's looking for. She has two masks? Yeah. You can tell? Yeah. I don't know if you can really tell that. Andy, I'm telling you, I could see two masks on this poor girl. And when she's, she's running, yeah, how can she, she even breathe? I don't know. I don't understand it. There maybe could it's be a reason for that. Maybe you're right. Yeah, I don't think what it's COVID-related. Uh, no, no, no. I just think that they're hypochondriacs, and they're like, I, I still I have to 
Mm -hmm. I know, but what else would it be? You know, I had a neighbor across the street from me when I was a kid um, in one of the houses I lived in, and she never came out of the house. She was allergic to everything. Oh, yeah. And so when she did come out of the house, because of her allergy situation, and I'm talking allergic to everything, Cam, never came out of the house. like a bubble girl. Couldn't hang out. Yeah. Yeah. You ever heard of those? Yeah, they exist. Yeah. Well, I had one in my neighborhood right across the street, and I have a feeling that the girl who's running... Probably has a similar situation Maybe. that it's for her. It's you might for, be right. Uh, it's for health reasons. You might be right. Although, yeah, they, it's, it's proven that that's not going to do anything for you. So you're just wasting your oh, time. Oh, what are you talking about? Medical people wear masks yeah, all the time. They're forced to do it, and they're they're right in front of people's faces and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, but you don't think that a medical mask for a doctor or a surgeon well, that it's a, pr- it's a proven it's a proven thing is that, that proven doesn't, doesn't work. Maybe the hardcore NK whatever the hell yeah, but the regular mask mm-hmm. doesn't work. Like I understand if you're talking yeah. like maybe like something. COVID related, but if you're talking like medical, like doctors and nurses, they've been wearing masks in surgical environments for hundreds of years. I don't know about hundreds of years, decades, but but decades for sure. No, I get that part. It's just odd to see. I just look at him like, I just never saw this poor woman's face in two Mm -hmm. years. I'm like, oh, you have a beautiful smile. Remember you used to wear the uh, crown royal mask? Yeah. Yeah, because at the beginning it was kind of cool. I had this badass crown royal mask, put yeah. my glasses on. I was like kind of cool. Then I'm like, fuck this shit. Mm-hmm. Like, get me out of this. I had my I suit guy it. make me a custom mask. It was a custom mask. Actually, I did something with Jordan Bennington where we we handed out masks to yeah. uh, healthcare Saving people lives. and stuff like that. Um, Can I tell you something real quick? Yeah. Though? Now that we're on this topic. So Ty was in Detroit this past weekend, hockey tournament. Mm-hmm. I couldn't go. And it's very difficult not being there. Give Nathan Gerby a shout out. His team won the tournament, and um, he was kind of filling me in with what was going on outside of our own team. And and uh, great guy, man. I love talking to other people that are like you know into it and passionate about you know where your where your kid is at at the same age and stuff like that. So give Nathan Gerby a shout out. This kid's a good little player too. Um, but after the first period of one of the games, Ty, you know, and they come to the bench, you know. Throws yeah. up all over the ice. Just all over the ice. Oh, uh, yeah. And he felt it coming on. Like, he was not good the night before. I was trying to have medicine, like, delivered to the hotel. <laughs> Couldn't find a place that was open. Medicine delivered. Um, leaves the ice. Yeah. Well, you can you can have, like, a, like, an Uber Eats type thing, you know? Really get, like, a cold medicine for him. Something. Yeah. Like, cough medicine. He was coughing like crazy. You could get that at the gas station. Yeah, but they didn't, she didn't have a car. Oh, yeah. And it was, like, late. Like, 11 o'clock at night. I was trying to have it delivered. Anyway, so because uh, she couldn't sleep, she called me. I just hear him coughing in the background oh, like so crazy. Being next to my he just would not stop coughing. So we had that going on. He leaves the ice. He comes back, much like I did when I broke my finger. It kind of runs in the family cam where we just we stick it out. We stay in the game. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation no, like that. I'm not That's where you were you. under the weather and you stay. You got in good the game. genes, man. Yeah, thank you. you. Know. So he stays in the game. Well under a hundred percent, no energy. Um, you know, tries to get a nap in between games. They had another game that night. Goes to the rink, gets ready, whatever. Uh, right before they're about to go on the ice, one of the coaches looks at him and said, "Buddy, are you all right?" And he's like, "Yeah." And then he said, "Are you sure?" And he said, "No." Goes to the bathroom, full equipment on, Puke and everywhere. just pukes all in, in the bathroom. You know, so couldn't play in that game. So basically goes up there, spent a lot of money to go to Detroit. A different situation than you than when you're getting like kicked out of the games, you know, and like you waste money that way because you're mm-hmm. getting kicked out. He For was sick. Uh, probably hits from behind, probably hit from crossing behind. the line. I didn't hit from behind. I just Very hit illegal hard. hits. I didn't hit from behind, dude. Anyway, goes up there, didn't play in the semifinal game, didn't play in the game after that either. So he basically played two games. So, I mean, you talk about wasting your money. I don't want to say wasting your money. It is that what it happen, is, man. man. You get sick, dude. You can't. Yeah. At that age, you can't force a kid to play sick. No. Like, it's not. No. Like, it's just, you just got to eat that. Well. It's a good ex- experience for your, for your, for Lori and Ty to do. She's got to, she's going to have to do that a lot, man. You're going to be working, man. And Ty's going to be cruising around, traveling all the time because he's playing high up now. Like, he's, he's traveling all over the damn place. Lori's got to get used to going on trips and stuff like yeah. that, which she is, what I'm just saying. Oh, like, yeah. But you can't say. He should have played in those games. You, look, when no. you're a kid and you're sick, dude, you got to get away from everybody. Everybody. That's the thing. That sucks. That's <clears throat> why I would not have even pushed it. Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah, you want him to play and suck it up a little bit. You know, it's a semifinal game. But I'm not putting that it's on kid, all the dude. other kids, man. No. Christmas around the corner, too. He's you know? dehydrated. Like, a kid, 
Well, you're a grown man, and you'll get there someday, Andy. Mm -hmm. When you're fully developed. What's that feel like to be a it's, grown man? I can lift things up. I can mm -hmm. carry stuff. What else I'm can strong. you do? What else can grown men I'm do? I'm horny. You know, I, I, you know, it's just, you know, just different things like mm -hmm. that. But, but for a kid to be sick, and you're forcing the issue at seven, eight years old, like that could be that could be harmful for mm -hmm. him, man. He's already dehydrated as hell. Yeah. It's just, it's just, you had to eat that, dude. That sucks, man. Yeah. When you told me that, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, you know, because I know how expensive it is to go up there. Like, damn, almighty. And he gets sick. It's just bad timing, dude. You gotta think, man. Like you're around. You got. He's got two. He's got two sisters. They're around kids. Mm -hmm. You're at the rink. So you're you're at different places with kids everywhere. Like, man, one of your kids is probably gonna be sick every single day of the month. Like either ties a little bit, and then Chloe's gonna have it, and then Ivy gets sick. Like it's mm -hmm. just like, or you get it, and they skate like every. They day. They skate every day. He's okay. I hear you eating that money. I get yeah, you, dude. That's the hard part. It, it, it's yeah. more like, is this first tournament really with first, well, the te this team? First real? No, they went to Notre Dame a few weeks uh, okay. ago, but this was the first tournament with like, yeah, that's real sucks. elite teams. Yeah, you know, like they played some teams, and you want to see from how out it of is. town, from Michigan, yeah. and other places at Notre Dame, but the competition wasn't like it was this week. He's gonna have so many times, dude. You're gonna forget about this in, you know, a couple months. No, I know. You just got to eat that much. And he got sick at this time last year, too. This is kind of the time of year that... For everybody. I want him to be good for the holiday skate, the Stricky holiday skate that uh, Cam is coming to. I'll go to that, homeboy. Yeah, I can't wait I to see you there. Homeboy. My dad's getting surgery. I was going to go to my dad's. Oh, I was going to tell you to bring him, too. I told no, you that man, last week. He finally is going to get his knee surgery. Really? And he needs to get it... Because he was supposed to get it done. And I was like, I know no one cares about this. But you guys know when your dad, you get older... Like I gotta take care of your dad. Now he's gotta get this goddamn knee surgery. I can hear like his softball like, injury. I can hear his cartilage. I think it's just from getting older. You know what I mean? And so like we want to get a new puppy for him, but he's gotta get this done before he gets the puppy. You know? Because my Tucky, his dog, he's getting older and he needs a replacement eventually here. But he's gotta get this damn surgery done. Mm. So, so he's gonna be out of commission for you a little bit. You can hear the cartilage. I can hear it in his goddamn. What do you mean? Knee. What do you? What does it sound <laughs> like? It's just. Uh, it's just he's gotta get it s scoped out and stuff oh. like that. So it's not that big of a deal. But uh, knee, but I'll, I'll knee go. replacement or a uh... no? It's not that. It's just I think it's scope. Mm -hmm. But you just got to get it done. You yeah. know what I mean? So he could his life is walking the dog and listen to tell him us. To, tell him and to me on send the radio. me a picture or two of, of what like the X rays or something just to kind of get an idea I, I of what's going on. Hey, sometimes you get a big hole in that cartilage. You know that. I mean, yeah, you know, like I just he just get it cleaned out, but uh, yeah, but I'll go to that thing with you. Yeah, I know you will. Yeah. And then um, yeah, a couple other things too. Like I told you, um, Andy, you know, when I talk about weather and stuff like that, like there was a tornado the other day, earthquake. Well, we had an earthquake in in um, in Southern Illinois, Illinois yeah. and people felt that mug in Nashville actually, but in Tennessee there was a tornado, and of course it goes through a goddamn trailer park. And there's, why always a trailer park? Well, because it doesn't. Tornadoes aren't like, hey, let me get them Hoosiers in that. Tra no, it's just when a, when a tornado hits a trailer park, it does a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. So it's talked about more. Right. And so uh, it hits this trailer park, and these two little infant kids, like I, I, not infant, oh, maybe like two God. two years yeah. old, they all survived. But one oh. of the kids got got sucked away, all the way on the other side of the uh, of the uh, property, stuck into a tree. And they're like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? And they look out there and they find him. He's just kind of curled up in a tree. Okay, safe, but that song bitch hit and hit this trailer park. Safe, safe, alive. Yeah, it's he a miracle. He hit it was his a head miracle. On that tree, dude. Dude, could could a piece of shrapnel could have cut him? Like so many different variables. No died. injuries at all. I don't know about that. You but mean he's alive. he went flying through the yeah, air and landed in a tree? Sucked him out, and the tree fell over. Boom. Is there landed. video of this? No, Andy, you can't film that, man. No, no, no. Like somebody captured it on the ring. No, camera. I read it, and I read it in the paper. It's a big story. Because I read things, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because I read a lot of stuff. I don't just watch hockey highlights all night and stuff uh -huh. like that. I, I watch, I do both. Because yeah. I don't have kids, so I have time to do it. I've got a lot of stuff for But Andy today. comes in here and acts like he's read everything. He doesn't, he just find something popped up on the radio when he was talking to somebody on the phone. And he starts no, talking well, about I've it. got some stuff for you today. Oh, yeah, like what? Well, I'll tell you a few things in a, in a second. Um, okay. Number one, um, this earthquake, though, 3.1 on the Richter. Wasn't that big of a deal? Well, 3.1. Wasn't that big of a deal? What a big deal. People, people felt it shake, man. Yeah, but it's not going to do anything. I felt an earthquake now, before. We've had earthquakes here before. Of course we have, dude. And where, you, where you feel it. Like the yeah, but it's not going to do damage. Now, we are on a fault line in southern Missouri. You know mm -hmm. that, right? Yes, we are. We always have you know been, where, yeah. Yeah, do you know where it's at? Mm -hmm. Where the fault line is? Uh, Where's it, what's it called? God, you know what? Give me a minute. Exactly. New Madrid. It's a New Madrid, New Madrid fault, fault line. line. It's in southern Missouri yeah. near the boot hill. Yeah, yeah. Missouri 
got rocked. Don't act like you're like because you know that that it's like a one up. I, no, no one cares. That oh, you know. I one up you all the time no, when, when mean, it came like, to, comes to like, basic I'm glad knowledge. You remembered one. Now, uh, la- new last Madrid. episode, I was a contrarian to Andy when he's talking hockey, and I felt like a dick about it. So my bad. Oh, on that. tell me about that. I just felt a little bad because I'm listening to and you just. I guess he annoyed me a little bit, and I'm just like, ah. So my bad on that. But when it comes to basic knowledge Dude, about different, be a contrarian, I didn't mean to. My bad. That's why I brought it up, and that's why I'm apologizing. Yeah, yeah. Contrarian, yeah. Contrarian, whatever the fuck. Yeah. But um, but when I know this kind of stuff, Andy, you're just way out of your. It's all good. But uh, what but no, hat are you wearing what, today? New, this, this is the first form. Don't don't just. Uh, is that a first form yeah, hat? It's the first one. It's yeah. very orange. I it's like that. Cool. Yeah, it's like a hunting. Like hat. a it's hunting hat. I want to be different. I like it. Anyway, New Madrid fault line. We're going to get rocked by an earthquake. Happened in the late 1800s in Missouri. The, actually, the Miz- Miz- Mississippi River, it rocked it so bad it flowed back, backwards for a while. It rocked, rocked downtown St. Louis. Downtown St. Louis is covered by all these different caves and stuff, and it rocked all these different caves and stuff like that and fucked up the city pretty bad. Mm. Then it got rocked by a tornado. All in a little bit of a couple years, wow. man. Yeah. So, We're due for one in Missouri, baby. Earthquakes. So yesterday morning, I'm driving down the road. It was a very peaceful morning. Sunday morning, uh, I'm taking Blade to the groomer. You should. He needed a haircut. Because if you don't take them. Well, when they're neglected, you got to take them and they get he's all. He's not neglected. They get the hair all wrapped up and stuff He like gets that. like matted. And then they'll shave him. And matted hair. It's That's when like, you know you're uh, a Hoosier. Yeah, well, we don't have that happen. He gets groomed every ex. Just saying. It's a lot expensive, dude. Big time, homie. It's like 140 bucks to like, you know. I know. It's like, expensive. I mean, you have insurance? Health insurance for your doggy. No, it's I, expensive. I, I, that's a waste. Is it? Oh yeah. I think it is, and it's not. At no, times. I read up about I it know. recently. It might. My be. buddy, um, it might be, who's got a incredible uh, Australian Shepherd man. Yeah. Very smart dog. Yep. Very much. Extremely so. smart. I've Sheep actually hers. looked into getting one, but the problem is. I'm kind of into the anti-shedding dogs right now. The kids, yeah. are, everybody wants a second dog. So I'm in the market looking for a second dog. But I just can only handle like one doodle at a time. It's Why not don't you really... adopt a dog? Yeah, I thought about it. But I don't you know, like the shedding, man. I had a German Shepherd forever that just shed all over the place. And I'm just kind of like. A little pit bull. Have a little bit of uh, security I like a bull, in your house. a bulldog. Those things don't last long. They're expensive. English bulldogs. Uh-huh. They have tough stuff with their nose. Respiratory um, issues. Yes, big time. Yeah. And they can't jump on stuff and like they they have stairs, like it ain't going up the stairs. No. Like you gotta well, watch. I, I kinda like that. I don't need it going upstairs, you know. Well then if you're upstairs, it's gonna be you, you can't ever go upstairs. They they can't get up there. It's just kinda they have knee problems, yeah, hip They're, problems. Why don't you just get a pit bull? I thought about it. A little pity, dude. A pity. A girl pity. Mm-hmm. You know, that's I'm not like anti pit bull. I know. No, I know. Although I got attacked by one. I told you that's your neighborhood. A long time ago. Uh, we don't care. But your neighborhood. <laughs> dude. Your neighborhood might want your neighborhood may not let one. Might not let that homeboy. No, the people down the street have one. Oh, really? But I don't think it's there. Is it an American bulldog or is it a pit bull? No, it's a pit. I was gonna say you're They're a dirty renting. ass neighborhood. They might be like, Oh my god, like no Andy, what is going on here? I think hey, hey. there's some of that talk you know. because it's like super aggressive. Well, the number one animal that kills the most people, I believe, in the United States is a pit bull. Is a pit bull. No, this one will kill. So like it has the look of a kill. It looks at you like They're it's usually, ready to kill. They're usually when they walk nice the too. no, I know, but when they walk the dog and like you walk, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying to get you know trying to get. So well, pit bulls have what they call lockjaw, where they get you and then you just can't get them off, dude. So yeah. I got attacked by a pit bull. This is on Y two K actually. We uh, rented a house, um, right there in a beautiful area of Arkansas, like right on the water. And uh, like, it was like awesome, Arkansas. On the dude. Buffalo River? Yeah, dude. It was incredible. I'm trying to remember the exact location, but a um, bu- bunch of people, dude. Great spot in the middle of the woods. So it was like 99 into 2000, so we all went there for New Year's, and a buddy of mine had two pits at the time. Everyone had their dogs there. So dogs are scrapping left and right, you know, or they're yeah. playing, but then eventually, like, something goes down, they start eating, whatever. Yeah, that'll Fights get happen. That'll get them. So, um... I'm wearing, it's very cold, you know, so I'm wearing like a big, we just got back inside, I had a big like winter like puffy jacket on, Mm -hmm. which saved my arm, because the pit bull all of a sudden just attacks my arm, dude, I couldn't get it off my arm, and it felt like I got hit by a baseball bat, dude, it it, it just like the the lasting effects, they finally got the dog off of me, 
But I could have lost my arm in this particular situation. So I know what it's like to get attacked by a pit bull. But I was telling you the story, Cam. I'm driving to the dog groomer. I've got Christmas music playing. It's a very calm, peaceful morning. And um, not even paying attention, I go to move over to the left lane. I didn't see this other car that was there. They, 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 they put the horn on, you know, and like, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even like pay attention. My bad. I, I own that. I should not have tried to get over. Almost hit the car. So they pull up next to me. And just like the guy in the driver's seat is like, ah, rah, rah, rah. I'm like, oh my God. And the woman in the uh, passenger seat is like screaming at me. Well, now I'm getting annoyed. I'm like, you know, like, stop yelling at me. Like, okay, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I probably said something back. So then they pull up a little further ahead. Now they slam on the brakes and they're like waiting for me to pass. And as I pull up, the woman's like this with her phone. She's like filming me. She got you. Like, what is she trying to do? Like, are you trying Intimidate. to like, Put it on like but, social media. So but, I was like, hi. You know, like I waved to the yeah. camera. Like, dude, I, I'm not losing my mind. I don't get uh, road rage like I told you. Like, I'm pretty it's calm. For the best. But these people are just going absolutely insane. Like, there's nobody else on the road. We're in Clayton, for those of you who are local, and, like on, on like small like streets, not very busy whatsoever on a Sunday morning, dude. Like, what, what, what could allow you or make you get so angry? Here, and what is she uh, doing to me in my face with her phone like that's that? What, that's what. That's what Karens do. She was a Karen. Whenever they want to make their point, like they're going to get you. And sometimes they do get you. But in this particular situation, they probably were pissed because Andy is driving like this. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> Playing. I'm on the phone. I, 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 I. Yeah, you probably annoyed Christmas the hell out of him. Was on, you're, you're talking on the phone. No. You're texting and driving. You're trying to change the station. You're talking to two different people while you're texting, while you're driving, and you probably pulled right over and you almost hit them. They probably got kids in the car. And they're like, "Screw you, dude! Pay attention they're to what not, you're doing." No kids in the well, car. Well, whatever, man. They were probably like, they're probably like, "Screw you! 50s. Why don't you get your put your phone down, stop texting and driving, and pay attention so you don't hit my." You're car. blaming me for this? Kind of. I could see how you would. You're, you're like, I wasn't paying attention. Well, wonder why. You're on your phone every two seconds. You're texting and driving. And you're probably talking to fucking Bl I got, Doug Bl I got Blay in the back of the car. When they, when they and you're looking at Blay like, shut up back there. And you're just not paying attention. No. When, so they they saw, got when they but, saw Blay is but, when they but, were when like, they, okay, we're not messing with But once with you cut somebody off and you honk and you're like, if, if you gave me the wave, I'd be like, it's all good, baby. Yeah. Just give me the wave. Like, my bad. I yeah. do. Sometimes it happens. And I'm like, I just, I even put my hand out the window like, sorry, sorry, sorry. And then, and then it's over for the mm -hmm. most part. But you're probably still talking on the phone and texting I had a while, lot you, on my while mind. you turned. And they're probably like, screw you. I'm going to film you texting and driving, doing 55, 55 things in a row. And they're probably trying to jam you up. So. Well, I had a lot on my mind. Ty wasn't playing in the game. He's guess, sick. Yeah, but I'm, when you I'm, I'm say talking that, though, to my like, wife to see what's going on. People are on. listening to that, and they're like, my son did the same thing last weekend. My daughter yeah, well, did it. And well, then, my, then they can relate So it's to not me. like it's a big, that but big I of a deal. But I was calm, dude. The Christmas know? music's going on. Blay. I feel like when they saw Blay, they were like, okay, we probably shouldn't mess they're with They're like, that's them. the same dog my neighbor has. <laughs> oh, and that's the same dog <laughs> my other neighbor has. And same, same, same. Because mm. you have a golden poodle. probably shouldn't mess with him. You know, I'd get a pit bull if I were you, though. Yeah, I thought about it. I really would. Mm-hmm. Go get a little puppy from a good mama. You could tell by the mom if she's a sweetheart. Get one of the, her litter, and just get a get a. I like I like girl doggies. Um, they're just kind of they're more chill. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't got the wee wee sticking out the red rocket, and they're not trying to hump everything. Although my dogs do hump each other at times. It's very odd, mm -hmm. and I just yell. But uh, girl dogs are more chill. So oh, I get a girl. I love pity. girl dogs. So do man. I. I, I prefer girl kitty cats. I prefer girl dogs. And girl kitty cats, I like. Yeah, cats don't really do it for me. I told you. No, before. I know they don't. But if you had one, and it was if you had one like little Boo Boo, I mm -hmm. have like you would understand why I love Boo Boo. Okay. You know? I t if Boo was in here right now, I'd be like this, put her up, and her head would stick out like, yeah. hi, and she just sit there like that underneath my thing mm -hmm. while I just watch TV, just looking out like me. Are you hunting today? Or hell nah, I don't hunt, dude. How, where'd you get that hat? I didn't. This is see normal it. brand, baby. What's oh, up? Normal I brand. saw Sal. You said first form, buddy. That's oh, what no, you said. this is first form. Oh, never mind. Okay. This is normal brand, mm -hmm. first form. Sal had this on the other day when I saw. And him. And just took it off his head and gave it to you. No. Well, how'd you I, get it? Online. Oh, you went and got one online. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I go. I got my dad yeah. a bunch of stuff, dude. Yeah. I hooked my dad up with all kinds of first form stuff. They got all kinds of dude, shit. First form has everything. They got it all. And yeah. I even yet last week, by the way, I'm gonna another apology. I was a little hard. I cussed a little too much, and I also was kind of a mess because I had this stupid styrofoam. Dude, and, and when Andy serves me, like he's 100 percent right on that. I look like a Hoosier. 
I had like styrofoam stuff. I, I was unorganized. My You're bad. On camera, buddy. I am sorry. So you know you had the styrofoam cut. I'm just trying to tell you for your own good. Yeah, yeah but on the other hand, I don't want to be professional me. either. Yeah. Like I, I like we're we yeah. look nice. Yeah. But I don't. Like I'm still gonna you know, chew and as stuff. As your boss, you just gotta listen to me occasionally. Yeah, okay, buddy. <laughs> I mean, we're both each other's bosses. I'd mm. say. Well, so I'm kind of your. Well, boss. It ain't gonna work if I'm not around, and it ain't gonna work if you're not around. So that's how it goes. Oh, that's the best part. Yeah. That's when you know you have a good thing going. But Andy would want to do this by himself. Like I'm a nuisance to him. He'd rather sit here right there and just talk. Right the whole where? Time. Where the plant is? Yeah, right where the plant is. So he can just talk the whole time. But you can't. So I'm here. Not true. I think you Dude, like did that. you see that guy who took a selfie with the walrus and then got the walrus pulled him into the water, killed him. I didn't know walruses were this angry and will kill you. Did he drown him? Drown him. Then the uh, trainer, the uh, walrus trainer. Was it at a zoo or a, a uh, yeah, some type of like you know? Oh well, they're probably like, get me out of this hellhole. Well, hold you know on. What I mean? So then the 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 walrus expert, he goes to like save him, and he dies too. Really, drown? So like, you know, don't be taking selfies with these animals, man. Now you force somebody else to die who's trying to save you. You know, like oh, that's I, a freak thing. Yeah, selfies, man. You take pictures of the walrus. You don't do selfies. He's like, hi, okay, three, two. All right, you ready? Was, selfie? It, was, was he right on the dock and it grabbed him? Like I saw a kid get rocked by. Well, a... I brought you a picture. You brought me one. Yes. You didn't send me anything because you're you're ten minutes late. Look at look at the teeth on this thing. See that? Let me see that mug right quick. Okay. I mean, yeah, dude, that's a freak thing. That, that usually doesn't happen that with much. walruses. Yeah, that's a freak. Well, thing. Are you are you familiar? with Do you ever? Yeah, I'm familiar with all yeah. kinds of different tragedies. Where do tragedies. walruses typically reside? Do you know which part of the world? I don't know. I think colder water. Mm -hmm. So you know, what I mean, I think a walrus is associated with cold water. Could be wrong on that, but yeah. I don't think they're that dangerous. You know what I mean? They're just not. You, you know, know what I mean? So that's just, a freak thing. We just hit like the anniversary, I think, of uh, uh, Harambe. Yeah, yeah, that was a weird ordeal too. Who got shot at the Cincinnati yeah. Zoo? Yeah, because the gorilla the because the kid fell in and he's why dragging, are you acting like I don't know this? He's dragging him around. He was trying to protect him actually for a little bit. We think because there's other gorillas that we've seen kids fall in, and they're very loving. Yeah, and they know. are protective. This one was like dragging him around the moat. By the, Is yeah. it a moat yeah, or a moat? a moat? Yep, that's a moat. Um, you have moats in different castles and stuff like that. They're hard to keep up with, but yeah, moats usually sewer. It's usually sewer Dude, from the drag him by his foot. That was, you know what? Who do you blame for that? Well, a lot of, of people course. think the mother should be uh, have to file criminal charges, just like the mom who just got sentenced to like two years in prison because her son, six year old son, brought a gun to school and shot the teacher. Andy, what a difference, dude. Yeah, she should, too. You're mm -hmm. stealing your kid. You're, you don't have your gun locked up with your your, your young kid there? That's on you. They said the she was on marijuana. Oh, well, whatever with that. <laughs> no, okay. that's what they like, said that's just, in the story. How stupid is she that? She was on marijuana. Well, she could be a fucking dipshit stoner. And she's like, they're smoking and neglecting your kid. And your kid's like, I know where your gun is. You think is. she should go to prison for that? Um, I don't know the full details. Does, does, I it's need to based know. Based on what I told you. Don't know enough. I don't know. I cannot. I can't make a decision on that. I gotta know how, what, just how everything went down in the house, mm -hmm. where the gun was located, <clears throat> how they are with the kids. There's so much to it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. But there's certainly blame. Just like with all these psycho kids, man. The parents are like, they didn't know. They didn't know. What do you mean you didn't know? You don't pay attention to your kid, Adam Lanza, Seth, these weirdo kids that you neglect that are downstairs looking up shit Adam all night Lanza. long. Yeah, dude. Remind me. Come on, dude. We just talked about that with uh, about the Alex Jones stuff. Oh yeah, yeah that's Adam that's Lanza. Sandy Hook. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Weird. I didn't know. Kills his mom. Like, no, man. Like, how do you uh, not know that? Like, your kid's fucked, and you just want to mm -hmm. you you want to ignore that. You want to ignore it because it's hard for to unfuck your kid. Yeah, because here's the deal. <clears throat> if you have, and, and a lot of our listeners, I'm sure, uh, have guns in their homes, you know. Tons I'm, of I'm them sure do, baby, as, as you should. I know. I and mean, you know how I, to use it's them. It's a personal choice. And you know how to use them. And you're not the ones committing the crime. It's the 15-year-old kids downtown that have illegal guns that yeah. commit crimes more than anything. Now, there's different cases where some who's your ass kid parents don't lock up their guns properly. The kids grab them. They shoot their kid themselves. Oh, their they friends shoot their, their who friends. come over. Their cousins. Lock your lock your gun up, dude. Yeah. Lock your gun up. I always knew where my dad's gun was, mm -hmm. but I couldn't get to it. He had it locked away. Mm -hmm. Always had his guns locked away. 
And I was always curious on what, uh, uh, yeah, like kids are curious. But you know, to have a gun in the right spot, no. You, I would always have guns in my you house. You know, uh, my father-in-law, you know, has had these drug stores for years and years and years. And one guy comes in and shops, and he would have like an AK-47 strapped to his back. That's ridiculous. And an it is. AK-47? Yeah. I bet you he didn't. I swear. I bet you I, he did not no, have an AK-47. No, it was an, it was I an bet a- we're not in the Congo. No, it was an AK-47. It's not an AK-47. So, you want to bet on that? I will bet you. You want to bet an AK-47? I will bet you a month's paycheck. An dude. AK-47. Not an AR-15. An AK-47? Ooh. You're telling me? I may be Are AR-15. you sure about that? I'll find out the exact. It's probably an AR. It was a big ass gun. They're bigger than that, Andy. They're like this no, big. No, super big. Yeah, like, well, you're going like this. Stretched the longest, long, the, from his neck down yeah. to this like hamstring. An AK-47. So, you're not in the Congo. I think it may have been an AK-47. Okay. I'll, I'll double check. I, I'll bet you. So anyway, so he was going there and he had shop with it on his back. That's ridiculous. And technically, legally, you're allowed to carry these, you know, on your person. It's it's a it's allowed. So nobody at the store was gonna like mess with this guy. He would just he'd pay for his goods and he'd leave. So then they put like a sticker up, you know, on the window saying no firearms allowed to like, gun free zone. Basically, say you can't like bring your guns. Those always in work. There. Anytime you have a company, but the first you, thing you want to do is put a gun free zone. But in let there. me ask you this: if you had a, a if you had a business in the in the city and somebody walks in with the AK forty seven on their back, are you telling them, hey hey man, you can't be in here with the AK forty seven? Yeah. You are? With an AK? Get that damn thing out of here, man. You got a pistol strap? That's fine. Get this AK out of here. I'm losing business with you walking in with an AK, which is really an AR-15, but he doesn't know the difference. I think it's, it's all an good. AK. It's probably an AR. Um, and, yeah, that's too much. And, 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 look, here's my point on that. Anytime you see somebody that has, a, has visibly has their gun locked and loaded, mm-hmm. I actually feel safer. If I see some cat in the gas station, I know he's. I know he knows exactly what he's doing with that thing. Yeah. He's been through the classes. He's got it strapped up the right way. It's not sitting in his pants pocket, aimed yeah. at his little wee wee, because they got to hide it from everybody because the gun's le- illegal. No, these guys are legal guns. At least you know that's a legal gun. Mm-hmm. You it's know funny what I mean? you say that because I had a breakfast meeting today, a very important meeting, mm-hmm. executive meeting, um, and uh, he's a good old boy. He's got a lot of farming land. I mean, super Yoink. successful businessman. Christmas yoink. Is that like a seven ounce can? Look a, a little, little smaller. Guy. Little guy. Is it? No. Or so either that or your hands are huge. One My hands are huge. Did you always have like people like know when you were little, like your ha- hands were like ab- abnormal? Yeah. They weren't proportioned to your body? No, they are pretty proportioned to my no. body. No. Your hands are way bigger than the rest of your body. My body's... I'm 250. <laughs> but you're like 5'9", 250. I'm six... What are you talking... Stand up. <laughs> no, we're not doing... Stand we're up. not doing that How tall again. are you? Like 5'11". Okay, stand up. Real quick. Stand up. I got my... Uh, stand up. Can I show the people my... Stand up. My, look, look at this. Look at these. Look, he's, got con- he's a fucking concrete worker. Stand up, boy. Look at that. 5'11". He's 5'11". I'm 6'2". I'm 6'2", Maddie. Hey, Maddie, I'm 6'2", baby. Can I show the people? He called me 5'9". Hey. He just said, he just stood next to me. I'm two inches taller than him. Outweigh him by 130 pounds. Look at these. And he says my hands hey. are disproportionate. Get out of here. This is all my You are a can. fake person. That's my, a fake thing to wear. All people in Saskatchewan, you could all relate. They laugh at you, When dude. you wear concrete boots like this. They laugh at you. You ain't wearing that to the Creep Corps Racket Club. They'd be like, well, are you working here, sir? <laughs> they're like, they're, they're like, like, sir... Are you work, <laughs> sir? The, in the back, no, you cannot wear those in here, sir. Uh, you need to fix it in the back. It's outside, but sir. But all my people in Saskatchewan and and Alberta and and, and everywhere, all these shit you. kickers, they're like they don't relate. They're to like you. Stricky is so he's so relatable to us. No, they're, you're not though. No, I'm very relatable. You're, you are more relatable than you think. But the way you are now, you're just not relatable at all. What do you like, mean? The way you grew up, you cr- kind of grew up in a no, no. You grew up in a decent area, but it's not mm-hmm. like a wealthy area or anything like that. It's not the hood like you lie to people. Five about. minutes from the wealthy you're area, not, you're, yeah. But you're still in a you're still in a blue collar kind of area. Yeah. You're not, but now you are so fucking fancy, and you're in the, the you're in this like fancy mix, and so am I. Like I'm on mm-hmm. a golf course and stuff like that, but I still hang out with blue collar. I still hang out with people that work paycheck to paycheck. Andy is in this bubble, this bubble now that he kind of forgot where he grew up. But then he acts like he grew up in the hood, which doesn't make sense. You just grew up in a little blue collar well, area. I grew up 
way more connected to the hood than than most people. I had a lot of friends that were from the hood. Uh, so did I. Like we, yeah. you know, I had a hood. Buying men- drugs down I, there for years. I had a hood mentality. <laughs> no, you didn't. That's funny. And I still carry that with me yeah. today. Because you don't know what you which are. Which is why and you don't know what he is. Which is know? why the road rage incident, the Karen, and she sees my dog in the back, and she didn't want to mess with us. She was in a Volvo too. Yeah, you know that it was well, two, could, could like, like it was two Volvos. Like, you had two Volvos going out. <laughs> but Andy, like, get off your phone. You know what I mean? I was driving my wife's car. I don't put the dog in my car, by the way. Get off your phone, dude. Texting and talking. I don't put the. I don't. I don't driving. put the. I don't put the dog. The dog doesn't go in my car. Did you get all the gifts for your kids? Hold yet? Hold on. Can I just finish the story oh, about yeah. Harambe? Oh, okay. So this other do- uh, kid who fell into the uh, gorilla pit recently was coddled by the uh, by the gorilla, and they were able to save the kid and whatever. The four year old kid who apparently was talking prior to falling in about how one he wanted to go in there. The mother wasn't paying attention. You should never be able to get in there anyway. I mean, whether you're climbing a fence. Yeah, there should be, like, even sneaking through if there's a skinny you kid. You shouldn't be able to get in yeah, there. Yeah, I agree with that. But Harambe is dragging his foot around the water and just pulling him around. I know, scary, dude. He had no injuries, yeah. but they shot him. I don't know if they used an AK-47 or what they no, used. No, they didn't use an AK-47. They probably put him down with a dart, and then they no, u- the euthanized darts, him. No, the darts, no. Hold on. See, this is where I do. They didn't kill him with an AK-47. This is where I do read things. Go ahead. Because the darts, they were afraid that it could startle him and make him angry if he survived it. So did they just blow his... They shot him up. And now there's a uh, statue of him. Like it's... Yeah. You know, that was a that was a weird thing, man. You no, know, it's like a statue, like it's yeah. like you know, like a legendary. I you bet know, you a million player. bucks they didn't use an AK forty seven. Well, whatever them. they used. Well, it's a big difference. They had an armed guard. They just go. Da, 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 da. Although AK forty seven people man, were pissed about the reason that, why AK forty sevens are so useful in war is because you could beat the shit out of them, dude. You could have an AK forty seven and it could be stuck in sand and take it out like. Yeah. So they're really reliable. And and like if you if you get they're tough to aim and stuff like that you're fucking all over the place. Yeah. But that's usually like, if you ever see the Art of War or uh, uh, what's that movie called with with uh, with uh, Nicolas Cage man? Maybe it's Ar- War Dogs or something like that. It's really really a true story. Really about this arm arm dealer and the way they use AK 47s and the kids that use AK 47s in Central Africa and stuff like that. They're hardcore weapons, but mm-hmm. they're reliable. You could have one buried in the sand. Pick it back up a year later. There's a lot of war movies out there. Yeah, there's some damn good ones, dude. I want more more World War One war movies. World War One. What a waste of life. There's a lot of those. What a waste. If you look really look up, Ronald Reagan was. Do you know about World War One? Yeah, there's Ronald Reagan was in some of those movies though. Did you know that? How did it start? World War One. The the reason for it? Yeah. To how much time do we have? Dude? No, we got five minutes. What do you? What I is, mean, do we have? Do you have time? any idea about World War One? Well, remind me. I mean, do, my you have no recollection idea? is a little different Damn than boy. yours, probably. Well, go ahead, tell us. Wow, Franz Ferdinand. Okay, you never heard of this? The Archduke gets shot by an eighteen-year-old kid from Serbia, and then Germany's like, "I got to take a side," and then Russia's like, "I got to take a side," Whoa. and then this fucking eighteen-year-old kid caused thirty million deaths in trench. Warfare. It was such a waste. And at the very end, everybody's like, well, what the fuck do we get out of that? Okay, we're going to tax Germany. And they, they they fucking taxed Germany. And they took away land from Germany for taking a side. Who because, did? What's that? Who did? Who did what? Who took the land away? Uh, I believe France. and I, believe, I think more France than anything. Mm-hmm. And so Germany's like, screw this. And then that's when Hitler started coming into play and was like, fuck that. We got to redeem ourselves here. And that's how World War II started. There's so much more to it. But it really happened by an 18-year-old kid. Mm-hmm. He died later in jail. But like Franz Ferdinand was, I think he was, so vi- they arrest- he's from Austria. They he's visiting Serbia. Even back then? Yes. Even back then. That was in, what, what year do you think that was? 40s. What? For World War I? What what year was that? Well, go ahead. You no, said the forties. No, That's World dude. War Two. What's World War One? God, before that, when? Man, Andy, it's oh, all good. Oh, dude, why are you gonna put me on the spot? No, it's all good. You well, do it to me well, all the time. Well, you ask me what, about Israel. What Palestine. year did the Maple Leafs win the Stanley Cup? Sixty six. No. So, when, it's not nineteen sixty six. I think sixty seven. Oh, whatever. So nineteen seventeen, 
is early 1900s mm -hmm. in, the, in the teens, mm -hmm. right before the 20s. Um, but but that the whole war was so it's trench well, we warfare. We may have to take that out because you just put me on the spot. No, we're not taking any of that. It's all good. You don't know your shit. It's fine. <laughs> but it's really weird, man. I want I want more movies about World War One. I. I know a lot about World War II, but World War One was really interesting in a weird way. Weird way. So there's my answer to that. Okay, you know well, I mean? no, that's a good answer. So anyway, why don't you watch a documentary? A You'd things, be really interested. In it. it's I, well, good. let's watch it, dude. Bring, come on over. Let's hang out, and we'll watch just, some of that I stuff. I can't really. I can't. I can't. I don't think you'd be into it. Dude. No, I got so much going on. Dude. My phone's going off. I, I, I just watching I movies. It's hard. That's to, why I think I know a lot of this my wife stuff. watches a lot of the Hallmark movies and stuff. Oh, like mine that does right too. Now with we Ivy. watched Titanic again. God, well, it's one of my favorite movies. How many movies. times do you have to watch the movie? Kate loves it. She wants to watch it during Christmas. Another Is that a Christmas movie? No, but it's a winter movie. Is it? Yeah. We don't it... even have winter. I mean, today it's windy. It's very windy. It's cold today. Yeah, it's big I mean, but cold. It's, it's not like bitter cold. No, you know? we've had the easiest fall and ever. Christmas is going to be like in the mid-50s. It's going to be a mid-50s. I might have a fire on Christmas Eve. Outside, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Even in the fifties, you gotta have a fire. Right. It's come still on cold. over, dude. After we quit come invite come me to your lunch. fucking house after the holiday party, you can come like, over not, for lunch. Like, fine, I will. Like, I'm gonna hang with your kid that Christmas Eve on like on the ice. Like, I don't need to come over. You know what I mean? I just invited you. So anyway, a couple things I want to finalize, uh, wrap up. Uh, you know, uh, no pun intended, but put a bow on the uh, couple stories that I was talking about. So. Harambe, oh, enough with him, dude. No, no. So he, no, was, so, dude. No, enough. I'm finishing this. So he was shot. And people were very upset and very angry about him being shot. I'm just curious, in your opinion, did they make the right decision to shoot the gorilla? If you had to save the kid, you got to kill the gorilla, dude. You it's put the human fucking, over it's the animal. You put the human first over the animal. Are you kidding? I'm just saying. Of course you okay. do. A little child. Well, if that's Ty. Dude, shoot it. And you neglected Ty, and he snuck through the oh thing, and he fell. Not no, that you really no. neglected him, but like a kid could get sneaked through anything. Yeah, I know. You got to kill the fucking gorilla. You got to kill the Listen, gorilla. Listen, I'm an animal lover, dude. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even. Like, I'll kill deer if I had to, because I'm going to kill them with my, my car anyway, way the hell out there, man. But, like, a, a gorilla, a majestic animal like a gorilla, like, I hate seeing you that. you think... But a kid is a kid, and you got to protect the kid. Do you think the other animals, who are, like, their friends, know that they just got shot and killed, like, they're dead? Yeah. A gorilla? And damn right. They're, they're way smarter than you think. And they're upset. Yes, dude. They... Gorillas are family oriented, man. They are. They go. They they go everywhere. Dude, a, I saw a, these silverbacks just scrapping, dude. Like there was like yeah, twenty of them through the wild. He's a big dick, baby. They were fighting over which direction to go in in the woods. Here's another preceding you, concept. You, you, you hear what I said? They were fighting over which direction, to, and I don't know how Maybe, these yeah. how these experts know what they're fighting about. Because you know how, how do you know what's going on in hockey? They mm -hmm. that's what they do. So the only thing I was going to wrap, wrap up about my my executive meeting I had this morning. He's a good old boy. He's got a lot of farmland and stuff like that, and. Uh, I know he was packing, and I was thinking that, dude, if something went down at he's where got we you were at, I, like, dude, I felt safe. I know, because you know he's not gonna, yeah. he's not committing crimes. He's going to protect people like you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Andy and the women and the children need to be protected <laughs> by the grown men. And so, like, why you got to lump me in that category? Because if a war went down, mm -hmm. if a war went down, like I'm bunk hunkering down, I'm taking Kate, the fucking puppies, all. We're, they're going to a certain area. They're being protected. Andy's going to be part of that group with the women and children. And the shit kicker's got to stand our ground and defend our land. That's what's going to happen. But Andy's going to be with the women and children hanging they out were, like, I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. And they're like, Andy, calm down. Dude, You're scaring the kids. If they were inspecting, looking to create their coalition of... Shit kickers, and they saw me wearing these boots, dude. I'm 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 with the shit, shit kickers immediately, based on my boots that I'm wearing today. You're right, dude. So, um, but the other one, yeah, with the um, the I mean, the silverbacks fighting, and then the other kid, they 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 survived the the other kid, and I don't think they had to shoot the gorilla. They should have shot this damn walrus though. And, and uh, it's hard just to have a gun at, at Sea World. Like I gotta kill this walrus. Like Don't shoot. Be taking and selfies. Here's a, and man. here's another thing, Andy probably doesn't know about, it, and it's all good. It's like once you get into the water mm -hmm. and you shoot into the water, it, it the the bullet automatically just what slows happens? down so much. Now, can you kill someone if in you had water? A 50, so like D Day, if you ever watch D Day, World War II, that's in the forties, when when the U.S. went on to Omaha Beach. And they're pulling up, and the things went da 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 da, and they all jumped in the water, and they were so packed down, they started drowning. And all the Nazis were up there on the fucking cliffside, like dun 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 dun, with that fifty cal, that fifty caliber bullets, this 
thick, dude. It's this big, Andy. And it was going through the water, and 50 cal is so powerful, and it hits the water. It'll still kill you, but it slows down really quick. Like, so, how, how, like if you're in water, can you be safe? Yeah, but you're, you got to be 10 feet down. From a 50 cal's hardcore, man, that thing's still going to get you. How far will it travel in water, you think? Not that, that far. That it can kill you. Even a 50 cal, not that far. Like, how far? Like, I say f- from here to there, maybe. Yeah, but, like, I how, you, how are you going to stay underwater? Oh, well, my, that's my point. Like, but you can. So my point is, like, if you're underwater 10 feet down and I start shooting at you, I think you're going to be okay. So my, you said the walrus. Kill the walrus with a gun. Like, okay, shoot, at, shoot, shoot the water. Like, it's not going to kill How's a damn a thing. walrus killing you? Swallowing that's a, you? That's a free... It just drowned you. Drowning you. Oh. It's not killing you. It's not eating you. It's drowning you. Mm-hmm. Especially you. He could probably just go, pull you down two uh, seconds. I He'd be like, hell. I, I can pull that thing. I'll walk on. off me, walrus. I have, if I was with the guy I was with this morning, I'm all good. You got those boots on, you're drowning no matter what. Hey, before we get into some hockey talk, though, Cam, uh, Mr. Beast, do you know who that is? Yeah, I do. What's yeah. your take on him? I like him a lot. He I does, loves him, dude. He does a lot for a lot of people. Mr. Beast donates money. He cures people's fucking ailments, whether they're blind, whether they're what this. What do you mean? He cures their blindness? Yes. How He'll, does he do that? He will. He has the money to pay for the right procedure for these people that will cost him so much money. Those guys make that much money. They make Mr. So, Beast. Mr. Beast makes so much money on Dude YouTube. Dude, perfect. You familiar with him? Uh, I don't know too much about him. Well, you heard of him though, right? Yeah. I'm just telling you what Ty watches. Yeah. Um, Ivy watch like there's a, the royal family. Have you heard of them? I know who the royal family is. Nah, but these people they call themselves like the royal family. No, I mean they all if, have if, like no offense, but if Ivy's watching it, I'm probably not. No, watching you probably it. will get into it. All right, and they got like I'm watching shit about World War One. The mom man. is very attractive. Oh really? Yeah. Oh my god. And they all drive like Porsches and Ferrari. They have so much money, yeah. dude. And See, Andy it. loves that kind of stuff. <laughs> Andy loves no, watching no. like who's <laughs> rich. And no, like, I'm gonna like look at. I the don't dang. watch the show. I like watching like young kids like saying, in like Ferraris. I don't watch the show. What I'm saying, these people that have these successful YouTube shows, they make a shit ton of money. I know. So Mr. Beast just lost his lawsuit. He was trying to call his candy bar D's Nuts because of the nuts he was putting on his candy bar, and he was calling it D's Nuts. Yeah. Did you know there's a company out there called D's Nuts? It's named after someone's grandmother, D. Well, okay. You can't yeah, that, it's dude. like nuts, dude. Yoink! And so, dude, her, her uh, here, I took a... So you, I you took can't, a, no, you can't no, do I that, No, I took a story dude. for you just so you... Um, you can't do that. Look bro. at this, look at this. Jacksonville-based nut company D's Nuts, D-E-E apostrophe S, D's Nuts, has won a trademark case against Mr. Beast, which will now bar the influencer from using the name D's Nuts, not D-E-E-Z, that big of a deal. Z, not that big of on a deal. his candy bar. D's Nuts is named after the company's founder's grandmother. I it, see that. Okay? What so he it? lost. Did I didn't know. D's Nuts. So if anybody has... Uh, any connection with them? We'd like to talk to D's nuts and get them on the uh, get them on the podcast. We'd love to talk about D's nuts, man. We we'll bring no. them on here as a sponsor. Cares about that shit. Somebody's grandmother named D. Mister Beast is pretty cool though, man. I like his style. He he spends a lot of money. Mm-hmm. He does a lot of great charity work. One of his uh, fellow people like turned trans on him, and he's like, oh, okay, so now he's a woman. What do you mean? Like one of their like. Can I it's, ask? It's you? like me, you, yeah. Brody, and Maddie, mm-hmm. Alex. We're all this big group that we Jason, do. And then fucking Maddie's like, Amos. "I'm a woman," and we're like, "Oh, cool, Maddie's a woman." And then he comes in, and he's a fucking woman, and he's got a, he's got. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like he comes in with Dang. a wig, and he's got like women's outfit on, and we're like, "Cool." And then yeah. we do video together, and all of a sudden, you're all dudes, and then he's a woman, mm-hmm. and then he's just like, eh, "Okay, that's cool." Okay, so listen, the other day I have to sign up something for my family, and I had to give every, you know, give them. My family's names, you know, like, okay, what's your wife's name? Yeah, Andy. Yep. Laurie, L A U R I E, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, date of birth. And then they would say, is she a woman? I'm like, yeah, she is. Then we get to my daughter, Chloe, date of birth, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, is she a female? Yes, she is. My daughter, is she, are you asking me if my daughter's a female? She's a female, Andy. Yeah, yes, she is. Mm -hmm. Ivy, is she a female? She is. Ty, I said, my son Ty, birth- is he a male? I'm like, he's a male. And I go, why? Are- can I ask why you're asking all this? She's like, I'm sorry, but we're required to ask these questions. There it is. When did that become a thing? About 10 years ago. Mm, I don't think, I think it's sooner than that. Seven years ago. 
No, it's been. It's I been, think it's three been years or three months, uh, really. No, no, no. I've no, never no, been asked. No, that. no, 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 no. No one's no. ever asked it's, me if my son is a male. Star- started ten years ago, for the most part, and now it's trickly more and more and more and more. I and wasn't more. offended. I no, answered all the good. questions. You just asked, and I told her. I said I understand. But I that's said my daughter. So you know, I start a whole conversation with her about it. I'm yeah. like, so they tell you you have to do that? She's like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, when did? I'm like, who tells you? Like, yeah, I'm maybe. like, is someone like? Overseeing you right yes. now, I go. Do you feel uncomfortable asking me that? And she's like, Ah, whatever. She's it's like, part yeah. of the job. But if a teacher's telling my kid at a young age about this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. I gotta put my foot down on it. That's mm-hmm. all. No big deal. Your hands are really big. I, I just thought when you went like that. Yeah. That's how I see. That's why I can grab you and fucking get you. They're boy. not proportioned to, to what? the rest my of big your old body. Head? To the rest of your body. <laughs> oh, God, this is awesome. You know, Brady Kachuk, man. When he fought Tucker the other day, he lost his grip. He needs to calm down a little bit. Brady? Yeah. What do you mean? God damn, man. You know, I, those are like. No, but. You know. It's my bull. Like, Andy acts like he's best friends with everybody. Here. I played with him. I okay, played with Wall. Okay. He's my favorite I mean, teammates ever. I was in the box. Andy the interviewed other day, him. You know. I played with him. It's all good. I was in you the don't box. have to kiss her ass that much. It's all good. Yeah. But well. Brady needs to calm down a little bit, I think, man. Like, God, he's fucking fighting Tyler Tucker. Like, that team is so undisciplined. They get take penalties out the wazoo. And then Brady, their best player, Always feels like he has to be the guy that I gotta fight somebody now. Like you're the best player on he's that the, team. He's the emotional he's, leader. He's everything. He's everything. Hold on, on though. So like, you're getting beat. Like there's nobody else <clears> on that <throat> team that's gonna fight our six defenseman Tyler Tucker who plays 12 minutes a night. Like I don't understand that. Like he fights every single night. He's running the goalies. He's doing this. He's fighting different. Like he's just he needs to chill a little frustrated, bit. Frustrated. I know. I feel bad for him. So. He does everything on that goddamn team. He didn't need to fight Tyler Tucker. Tucker almost caught him with some uppercuts, too. And you're right. Brady missed. He didn't get his grip. And he didn't get his grip this time. And he was all over the place. But he hung in there, and that was an awesome fight. I just mm-hmm. I want him to chill a little bit. I'd rather somebody else take up a little bit of that where he's not fighting well, every talk goddamn— to the rest of the I team. Don't talk. blame Brady I'm on not that, blaming where, him. Where's everybody else? But, but I will say— they were down three nothing. Ottawa was. He tried to fight Shen. Shen said no. So he goes Tyler Tucker, who's big so then, tough defenseman, man. You know what? So Tucker comes on the ice. Brady's going to change, and he sees Tucker come on the ice. So he just goes right back out there, fights him. Listen, it's not a, it's not a trade off that you want if you're Ottawa. If I you're know. the Blues, you'll take that. Yeah, Damn what? Right. I get to get Brady Kachuk off the ice for five minutes. Hell yeah, man. So even Big Walt being up in the suite for a little bit with he and the family. Um, they they were saying the same thing, like, hey, you know, shit, man, you know, like, you'd rather not see him fight Tucker for that reason that we're talking about. But, dude, I think sometimes emotions take over, man. He is the heartbeat. He is. And he is everything to that team. And like I said to you a long time ago, and I said to all our people out there, man, who listen, I said it before the season, um, and I said it during the season. I, I, Ottawa's further away than people think. It's like you did say that people actually. assume Ottawa, Buffalo, all these teams are just ready, and it's like, man, they're not ready. Mm-hmm. You got to get in the playoffs. Let me see you get in the playoffs. Take your lumps in the playoffs. Then you can maybe get to the next level. You keep missing the playoffs. I'm not ready to say that you're ready to take that next step. You got to get in. Then you prepare yourself to take the next step. Dude, man, you opinion. take 50 penalties a night. Yeah, they're leading the league in penalties per penalties game. They take 50 penalties a night, and then, like, Brady's got to just do everything. He's squaring off in, in his center eyes with Tyler Tucker, who's a sixth defenseman. Like, it's just like, damn, no one else is going to do that for you? You're everywhere all over the ice, mm-hmm. man. You're doing everything. And he's got to go buckets off in his center eyes with Tyler Tucker. And like, I don't, it's like, damn, I don't great need, fight. I don't but. know this, and I didn't ask Brady, and I didn't ask Big Walt, but it's like, you know, listen— I'm sure the juices are flowing, man. He knows he's in the build. You know who's in the building. He's in St. Louis. I know. Lots of friends and family in the house, man. He he's frustrated. Team's losing. Yeah. You know he wants to put on a show too. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I get you. And you you acted like an idiot when you came back to St. Louis. Yeah, but I'm a fourth first line time. plug. He's a first I line remember, all-star. I, I had to write some very negative things about you. After I, no, game. you were always good to me, dude. Don't don't lie when you don't. No, have I to. did. Because no, the first time you ever came here, I didn't like oh, the way oh. you acted. Your 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 are your buddies. They were annoying me in the box. Well, you know, my buddies I, are excited I, about I, the first. I, I wasn't ever. working uh, television at the time. I was like writing, and you were just kind of like putting on a show. On Fucking the right, I was. And but then I'm you a fought Barry Jackman, dude. I'm a plug, dude. Brady's a superstar. And Jackman didn't want to fight you. He just fought you because he's like, dude, you need to calm down. Jackman's not gonna pound him. To be honest with you, I love him. But he's just saying you need to calm down. But you could have fought. Calm him. down. I'm rocking. You guys, wouldn't fight man. Downey. 
No, that was more of a joke. I fought Downey before. Yeah, but you didn't fight him in that game. He was trying to fight you, dude. Yeah, well, he dropped his gloves, and then the puck kept, kept coming to him with no gloves and Lou's, on. And Lou was on the bench. <laughs> Lou loved for it. For that game. Lou didn't want me to fight anyway. I almost scored in that game, too. All my family was there. That was fun, man. But I was annoying. But who cares if I'm annoying? Brady plays 20 minutes a night, dude. Like, I just... I just think he needs a little bit of help when it comes to that, man. When you're bad. Yeah, well, don't chirp him, man. Who is chirping Brady? Okay. God, what's wrong with you? Well, like, I'm just, just saying, sticking up for them a little too yeah, much. Like, cares. I will, because I understand. Yeah, it's I, like, I like him, too, but like, like, dude, I'm not he's, chirping he's, Brady. I'm just saying. like, Probably gets sick of losing all the time and like nobody else it. like pulling their weight. No one does they, anything. They got these guys like you know Claude Giroux and Tarasenko and some of these other veteran guys. Way. And, you know, you've got your younger players like Josh Norris. I think he scored the next game, and he's a hell of a player and a young player and whatever, and he's dealt with some injuries. And, you know, Stutzla, and they've got, like, you know, Chickren and some of these guys on the back end, and Jeff Sa- Jake Sanderson. They've got some players, man, but they are just – the reality is Brutal. further away than you even realize they are. And, um, I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised if D.J. Smith – Travels back to Ottawa and stays with this team. His days obviously are number, but they're letting him hang around now. If you're going to let him play through this or coach through this, then uh, maybe the plan is just to let him stick it out and then regroup maybe. in the offseason to hire who you want just and don't come get, in fresh next year. I don't know. I, I get you. I get you. But I that. would be surprised if he just continues to last and they totally. just let it just completely. But my, my 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 point is, I'm not chirping Brady. Like you need to chill with that stuff. I'm just saying, like, yeah, you want to. You want to last the rest of the year. Brady keeps fucking fighting everybody on every fucking team and pissed off every night. He tried to fight a goalie there a night because he came out and kind and of penalty slipped. shot. Like, geez, like <laughs> you got to calm him down a little bit, man. That's your fucking soup. Mm-hmm. That's your prince. That's your superstar. He needs to play the game. That's yeah. me saying that, dude. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, I'm not chirping. Okay. Chuck. I'm just making sure. Oh, so you're not chirping him, right? No, no, I know. Okay. You're okay. Walt's well, make- not going to call you. Making sure. Like, I love Walt, dude. Are you kidding? I love Chantel. Love all of them. Matthew. But I see what I see, mm-hmm. and it's like he's just doing too much. Fucking going toe to toe with Tyler Tucker. We're gonna play that video, dude. Tucker's throwing uppercuts. Brady's eating them, like switching. Like I love it. But I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Go play the goddamn game. And they got a spark from that that night too. But, um, but yeah, he's just he's just doing a lot, dude. And it's not gonna last. You know, it's just too much going on. Mm-hmm. He's gonna get hurt. I don't know who's gonna. I mean, maybe. I guess it could hey, maybe be. not. Yeah, I don't know. anybody. All, anybody who fights all you the time. You roll the dice and hurt. fighting guys, you're gonna hit your yeah. head off the ice sometimes. Yeah. Somebody's gonna catch you with one. Brady, what know? size shoe do you wear? Because I'll send you a pair. Uh, and this will make you tougher. Shoes of those shit kickers. Yeah, you need some shit kickers. My buddies wear those, man. When they do concrete. Yeah, me too. And they look look at you and be like you don't even you have know, socks with them. Like, a, well, no, he's, he's he's not even wearing socks with them. Like they're fucking loafer. Andy hangs out with guys that wear fucking loafers all with day. no socks. With no socks, he hangs out with. They, at the Creve that's Coraga, what Ryan O'Reilly wears. At the Cre- that's Ryan O'Reilly. At the Creve Coraga Club, all his buddies have loafers on. You know, like what's going on here? Tell Cam to stop saying blue color, okay? Like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. Cam well. curses too much. Cam curses too much. We don't like that here at mm-hmm. the Creve Coraga Club. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, my bad. Like my that, bad on that. That damn Karen. I'm having. She probably goes to the Creve Coraga Club. I'm having night- she would not be allowed. Hey, there. don't cut people off when you're texting on the phone like wasn't, a jackass. I wasn't texting. Dude. I was singing Christmas music. And I was talking to Blaze. Who are you back. kidding? You've never not looked at your phone. The only time you don't look at your phone is when we're doing this. You're always. I I told you I talk to Andy on the phone, and anytime I say something, you know, I always hear a pause because he's texting people. So he calls people on the phone, and then he's texting other people at the same time. Then he's driving. Mm-hmm. Then he cuts people off in Clayton, and they're like, fuck you. And then Andy's like, Buck, I can't believe they – I almost killed him, but I got business. We're talking Jordan Cairo and Brady Kachuk. I got to text and drive. Don't do that. Yeah, I know. It's all good. How about the uh, Rantanen situation? It's goofy. Mika Rantanen. Andy, that's goofy. He brings it to the public, to the media, says his teammate's dad was chirping him. What kind of weird shit is that? That's a little That's crazy. goofy. Like, don't even bring that up. Talk to your teammate. Talk to your teammate. And not to mention, when family members get involved with anything, just so all y'all know, it's never good. Okay? Never good. It's like my dad saying, like, hey, Andy Murray, Cam needs to play more, and he's tweeting that out or something, or he's, like, making a scene. Like, get the fuck out of here. I love you, but don't cause any drama with me. And, like, for Rantanen to even, like, get pissed about that and bring it up, I thought when he said that, Andy... He was talking about somebody else in a different team, you know, somebody. But he's talking about his own teammate, which makes it so much more bizarre. So they're like, oh, I, I got to show my teammate's dad that I worked out all summer. 
what's he talking about? Like, it's odd to me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That situation with Billy Garen was weird, too, huh? Was he getting in a jam for yelling at somebody? I don't know, man. Like, like who said Wait, wait, who said it? Was it the I nerd was the it the nerd boy that didn't secretary or something? Was it a woman? I don't know. I don't believe so. No, it's not a woman. Nothing like I'm not saying like sexual stuff. I'm saying like no, I, no, don't, like just, I don't believe it's a woman. But like sometimes you got to put your foot down on things and you might not like it. You might got out of college and you're working and all of a sudden you done fucked up. And the your big boss man's like, what are you doing? You just you set us back. You got to do this. And you get chirped. And you're like, well, how dare he yell at me like that? No, you yeah. work for him. So it was a longtime employee. And he yells at me. His name is Andrew Height. He's been their travel team secretary. What, do you, what happened to him? Um, longtime director of team operations and player relations. So he's been there for a while. He uh, filed a complaint centered around an alleged incident of verbal abuse. Okay. Like, what does that define that? What do you say to you exactly? No, I'm just curious. Mm-hmm. Did he say shut the fuck up? Did he say either you get your fucking job done or I'm gonna I'm gonna fire you? Did he say did he threaten you? Did he say I'm gonna beat you up? What did he say exactly? What is define verbal abuse to me? You know what I mean, Andy? Like, what yeah. does that mean? I don't know, man. I got God. chirped. I got this. What? 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 Why what's does different? everybody run to the? Because it's easy to do. Because you know why? HR Andy? department. Because it's easy to do. You can go to. I'm not doing my job well, but. He yelled at me, so this I'm the victim. Wait a minute. You're the victim. You didn't do your job, and you got yelled at by your boss. Wait a minute. I'm a victim. I'm going to tweet out. I am getting... Blah, blah, blah. I, now, am, I am going I am, to HR, I'm, and I'm out. filing a complaint. I didn't do my job, but that doesn't matter, because my boss yelled at me, and so now you're the victim, although you didn't do your job. So, But there are some instances where a guy does, or a woman does do their job, and their boss is such a dick... And they chirp them, they do this. Well, then get out of there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It depends on what it is. Like, I don't know, man. All these little stories like that. It's like, what happened? What exactly happened? Because I don't really trust I don't really trust you on that. Me? No, no. I'm just saying like that dude. Like, uh-huh. what happened to you? Yeah. Did he threaten you? Their assistant GM, Chris O'Hearn, who apparently is a great guy. Yeah. People are shocked about that. He left. He, like, resigned. Billy Garen's going to keep his job, though. And the owner's probably like, dude, I'm not firing, like, completely just, you want to fire the general manager dismantle and just, the dismantle whole team. Hold the yeah. whole the whole organization. Because of what, though? We just need to See, know like, the listen, details. travel secretary, like, I don't know what happened. Did you, like, was the bus not there? Was the hotel room all fucked exactly. up? Exactly. And maybe Billy's like, do your fucking job. Do your fucking job. You know what I mean? What did you say? Excuse me. I know we're going to sleep in a parking lot, but it's, don't talk to me like that. No, fuck you. Get your shit together. Now, again... What did he say? Like, I need to know. Did he threaten him? Was it something about, did he say something like did mean? Did Billy grab him? Meaning like. No, it was verbal abuse, so it was like not physical. Like, define that, though. You know what I mean? Like, He's what did, like, fuck you. You're fucking terrible? Well, are you? Do your fucking job. Do your fucking job. You know what I mean? I'm just curious. Now I'm cursing. Or it could be like you, you know, I don't know. But it, Billy G's my guy. He's a very emotional guy. And I'll say this about Billy. I said it when he got hired. That he, and, and, you know, it was proven true because he got rid of a couple guys right away. Yeah. Like, he ain't afraid to, like, of conflict. No, to, like, set a torch or something. And if he's not happy with something, he'll let you know. Dude, they only have so much time, man. That's why Doug Armstrong's making things happen like that. Like, he can't can't just sit back. Like, he's got to fire Craig Berube. Yeah. Like, whether you agree with that or not, man, he felt like that was that was the right move well, at the time. Well, he's made these moves in the past. He has. And I know everyone gets all worked up, but the reality is yep. no one really knows what's going on no. either, you know? No. And it's like, you know, I I, I talked to Berube on a couple of occasions, did an interview, the first interview yep. that he first did. First one ever. That, that he, he did, did after yep. he got fired, man. And if you hear his tone, it's almost like, you know, he, he's all good, man. Like, he's ready to move on. Yeah. I, I don't believe, that. like... Some of these conspiracy people throw it out there. I think Chief wanted to get fired. It's like, no, no one ever really wants to get fired. It's ridiculous. But when it happens, I think when you realize you're in a good spot, you have another year left in your contract, you're making more money than you've ever made, you won a Stanley Cup, you left the organization on such good standing, you're so beloved by the fan base, oh. and you're leaving as like a legendary yeah. figure in the history of the organization, and you know that you're going to be able to get a, a new job as soon as you want one. Listen... I'll be curious, like everyone else, to see what Craig Berube does. I think he's going to take a little bit of time. I think there's a good chance you'll see him on TNT very soon, yeah. doing some television work. I think that option's been presented to him. I told him, I suggest that he does it. Go have fun with it. Don't act too crazy and goofy, man. Kind of be like talk it, whatever. Have fun with it. Use your personality. But at the same time, don't get caught up in like 
not being who you are. And he would never do that anyway. You know, Chief kind of stays true to who he is. No, he is. But, he is. you know, I think he wants to stay on the East Coast. Um, you never know if, like, a job like the Islanders would open up or the Devils would open up. Would he, would he potentially want to jump in there? But my prediction, if I had to make a prediction, and those teams kind of qualify in the prediction category because I do think he wants to stay in that area. Uh, he's going back to Philly now. His wife is from Philly. They kind of like that, you know, New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia area. I know John Tortorella is having a great season. Tortorella and Craig Berube are very good friends. From what I understand, they've been talking a lot since Chief got let go. And they probably talked a lot even before that anyway. But there's been some talk about uh, John Tortorella eventually, probably sooner than later, moving up into a managerial position. I don't think he wants to coach forever. That's you know, hard. he's making money. And, you know, at some point, I think he's looking to transition into a managerial role with the Philadelphia Flyers, and don't be surprised if that happens and Craig Ruby slides in as the head coach. Listen, Chief's got a ton of history with that organization. Obviously, he's been a head coach in the past. He's been an assistant coach. He's been a head coach down at the American League team. He it's played there. Yep. And, uh, you know, he's got a house there in Philly. I think in a perfect role, world, perfect situation, he would go back to Philadelphia where one of his best friends in the world, Keith Jones, is now running the organization. So, listen. If, Danny if, Breer and Keith Jones, baby. Yeah, I, I, I think if he – I think they would love to have Chief in Philadelphia with the Flyers. But I know I, I kind of put it out there saying, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if he went to Philadelphia. Yeah. And people are like, what are you talking about? Torts is a uh, you know Jack Adams candidate and all this type of stuff. I, I, I know that. Yeah. But I, I, I think there's something going on internally that could see Tortorella moving upstairs very trots. into a managerial position. I can't confirm it, but I was told by one person that it's I even in his you. contract that he could move and slide into a managerial position. But uh, I don't know how quickly Chief wants to get back into things. I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to happen this year. I mean, you got to let it ride out right now with Torrance. There's no reason to make the switch now with the way the Flyers are playing. But who knows, maybe going into next year. And again, if that Devils situation were to open up, that'd be That's a more tough than the Islanders. Job. That'd be a tough job to pass up when you consider – what Tom Fitzgerald has done with that team and all the pieces they have. And the young talent. Very close to Philly. Yeah, it is. And, you know, Lindy, Lindy Ruff is not going to coach uh -uh. forever, you know, at his age. And now they're, I think they're falling out of the playoffs now. So Yeah, they're just not figuring it out, man. They got so much talent That's on that team. That's another team before the season, Cam. Everyone's like, oh, the Devils they're are going to win yeah. the Stanley Cup. It's like, yep. And I know they got off to a great start. And maybe Hughes' injury. Kind of like yeah, derailed so them a what, little though? bit. Like, but that's one guy out. Like yeah, you, I know. you're not that deep. Like, come on, you I got know. talent on that team. Yeah. Now the Islanders situation, man. Islanders are no one even talks about them unless John Tavares goes there and plays his, gets his thousand point, two mm -hmm. points, and they still lose in overtime. But the Islanders are winning. Mm -hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. Like Lou Lamarilla would love to have a Craig Bruby at the helm of their of their team. Like, don't get me wrong, but they're winning games. They're my dark horse, man. Did you have a problem with uh, the Islander fans in terms of how they reacted to John Tortorella? Like, why did everyone get worked up about that? On John Tortorella? I mean, sorry, on uh, John Tortorella. John Tavares? Yeah. I love Islanders fans. It's so funny when you look at all these fans from the Rangers, the Devils, Philly, and the Islanders. They're all connected. They all know everybody from each one of those teams. Even the away teams, even the Devils, the, the Flyers fans, the Devils players, they all know each other. And they're crazy. But if you walk around that building, like I did when I went there for the Blues and with the fans, yeah. remember I did that? Yeah. They were so nice. Yeah, were they, they would fight, literally, fighting in the stands, dumping beer on each other. They turn around like, can you, you can't. I go, what's up? And they're like, come over, like, what's up going on? Like, it's all a facade. Yeah. They're hardcore. But if you walked around, even John Tavares, if John Tavares walked around by himself and was nice to everybody, mm -hmm. they would love him. It's all uh, You're going to have an idiot or two. And then, then those guys will stick up for you on the idiot. Yeah. And I know those idiots. They they stood there when we had to walk from the hotel all the way uh, to uh, long, you know uh, the uh, whatever the Coliseum at the time, mm -hmm. the dump. They, and they chirp, and all of a sudden, like, ah, you're good. And I go, oh, Cam, we love you. We're just joking, just like on Twitter. It's so funny. Like if guys chirp me or you, and I stick up for you too, mm -hmm. big time. Not like, but I'll do it. I'll send a little direct message because I keep my message open. I go, dude, what do you mean by that? They're like, camera, I'm just joking. Do, do, do. I love you guys, man, blah, blah, blah. My like, God, why'd you say that hardcore thing? Right. I know. That's how it is. 
because everybody's so emotional at the mm -hmm. time. You're like, fuck this motherfucker. But then if you see him, you're like, man, I, I fuck you at the time, but you're a good dude. Yeah. Like, it's really odd. So, again, no, they're all cra I like craziness. I like when you're crazy. Mm -hmm. I got booed my whole life, too, even in AAA, like, fucking yeah. fan. But, like, if you're... If you get away from that, and a lot you're of the Toronto around, fans were kind of like, "Well, they shouldn't be doing that to JT." Who are you kidding? You know, like, what? who are they kidding? They stay, gave me death. They're going to stay true to who they are. It's not yeah. even that they're angry or mad. They're no, just kind of like crazy. that's their persona. I like it. They're living up to their you know reputation. JT's going to be okay. No one's. I thought no, it's great that he did it there. Yeah, I do. You know I, what I'm saying? I, know, I like that. And in a, in a, in a, in a strange way, for a fan base like the Islanders. Or a fan base like the Flyers, for example, when they boo, it's almost a sign of respect at the same time. I agree. They you know notice I mean? you. They they yeah. miss you. Yeah. You screwed them over because they love you. They're not going to celebrate, but they'll boo. It's their way of cheering I, for you, you know? Now, if your home team boos you. And that's a different story. <sighs> that's different. Your home team? And I think Jordan Cairo, sometimes you're in a bubble, man. Like, we're all, you're in a bubble. I'm in my own bubble. I try to break out of my bubble to realize what's going on. I try to. It's hard. We're all in bubbles. What kind of bubble am I? The fancy lad, Creefcore fucking racket club, nerd fuck bubble. That's what he's in. With loafers with no socks on. But Jordan Cairo. Not today. They're laughing at your bubble. is. La you might not be able to go in your bubble Pouring anymore because you're, fucking, you're too blue collar for them. Shh, don't say that word. But the point is with Jordan Cairo, I think Cairo's like, I'm the man. Like I, I'm the man. Like I, I'm I'm one of the best players on the team. Like I scored 37 last year. Everybody loves me. I, I signed a big time ticket. Da, da 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 I'm bigger than Ruby. Now I'm not saying, but I think that maybe a little bit that's in his head. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you say just a little thing, just a little thing. Maybe when you're walking away from an interview, maybe it's only you and Jeremy Rutherford in that little area. But right when you walk away, you just say this little thing. He's not my coach anymore. I don't want to talk about it. You quote that off. And you go against Craig Berube, who is actually beloved in this town. Mm. And all of a sudden, it blows up on you in a matter of three hours. Mm -hmm. Three hours before game time, this went out. And people and were 20,000 people knew it already, and they booed him mm. right at the beginning. And he's probably like, whoa. And he's not having a good year, and people no. were already, some, holding him responsible. 100%. For Craig Berube's firing, which is not fair either. You it's know? not fair, but he's a big part of that. Sure. Now, he's not a Stanley Cup winner. He wasn't part of that Stanley Cup team. He I played think some games that year, but you're right. No, he no, wasn't no. even he, healthy to do it during there. the playoffs. Nothing he had to a do knee with injury. It. He was having knee surgery I know. at the time. It, yeah. But I don't think people realize, though. No. It's, it's, I know. Like, he won a Stanley Cup. No, he them. didn't. I mean, he wasn't even no, he didn't. wasn't even a black ace. No. Robert Thomas did Yeah, that team. Sunquist. Mm -hmm. Those kind of, Sammy Blade did. Colm Pareko did. Jordan Bennington did. Right. But that's it. Mm -hmm. Jordan Cairo has nothing to do with that. He was nothing to do with the Stanley Cup run. But I do think that he was on this little pedestal that he he's a big dog. And then he kind of went against, not that he meant to do it. I'm not saying he did. And mm -hmm. we could break that down too. Mm -hmm. But that comment about he's not my coach anymore, time to move on. You quote that off. You mm -hmm. tweet that out. They, this whole city was on him. And he, I don't even think he even realized it until he stepped on the ice. Well, he woke up from his nap. He, he woke up from his nap and he looked at his phone, which Jordan Bennington did in 2019 in Winnipeg, too. Yeah. And that guy said that he was saying racist, racist stuff or whatever. Or shit, yeah. Nerd. You weirdo nerd. Anyway, so when Jordan Kyrie woke up from his nap and he's like, oh boy, no way. Then he gets stressed and he goes out there. He goes out there for the announcement to start the game and he got booed by 20,000 St. Louis fans. And he's like... They're not all booing, but it sounded like it. It was loud, man. They're booing. And the media is all over them. And the whole the whole rink booed Jordan Cairo. Every time he touched the puck, too. You could, my dad, a nuclear warhead, can go off right next to my dad's room when he's sleeping. And you have no idea. And you can have a party in the basement. My dad's like, Cam, every time he gets a puck, he's getting booed. Yeah. My dad heard it. He's yeah. lost a hearing. Are you kidding? And he made a great the play whole... in the game, too, on, the, on a, a nice assist. You know, they won the game. There was a ton of energy inside the building, you know, because it was Drew Bannister's first game. Yep. Yep. You know, the Blues like. actually played a pretty good game. They won the game. You know, you had a good scrap in the game. So Andy afterwards, because I'm not going to, like, no offense, but Andy's the one that needs to get the questions out of these guys. Like, Andy's so good at that. Not too many other guys. They'll, they'll kind of be like, uh, but Andy's in there like, no. And he stood next to Jordan Cairo. You can look it up, and we'll play this. And he wasn't. You weren't going to be done until you you got everything out of him. Like that was such a big deal. What happened to you, Jordan? What, da, 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 what was your emotion like? And, and Jordan Cairo started crying. 
and it showed how vulnerable he is. I know he makes a ton of money. I know he's a fucking superstar. Probably gets vagina. Where, although he's not that good looking, he probably gets vagina everywhere he goes. So he's got a good life. No one feels sorry for him. But when you got 20,000 one of your fans, your fans booing you every time you touch the puck, that's a problem. And he lost it. And Andy's trying to, Andy asked him and interviewed him and asked damn good questions. And you got it out of him. And you helped him. You helped him. Otherwise, he could have been like, well, da da da. But you dug it out of him and you showed his emotion and you showed how vulnerable this kid is. And he started fucking crying. And that was the best thing for him. And me and you both predicted he's going to go out there and he's going to kick ass and take names. Yeah. exactly what he did. And mm-hmm. now I see signs everywhere. We love you, Kyrie, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. They totally they, flip. And that's St. Louis Blues fans, yeah. man. They're hardcore. Yeah. But if they see that you actually care, yeah. that was, people are like, that's fake. Bullshit. Joe and Kyrie yeah, cried. Not that, many people. The some people, dude, I weirdos see it. would say that. So what? Right? But that was real emotion. And me, Andy and I talked the next day after I praised him because he's the best of the best when it comes to that stuff. And we're like, this is the best thing that happened to him. We yeah. showed how vulnerable yeah. a sixty-four million dollar guy could I be. I texted Cam at six in the morning because I knew I know. he was up. I'm like, did you, you see? You know I'm that? up, baby. Yeah. You know I'm up. And I couldn't really that sleep that night, man. I got home late. Yeah. Um and you know, and I got a really nice text from Jordan Kyrie the next day. I will say that. Like he wasn't like upset that, no. you know, he he was succumbed to tears. And and I think that really, like you said, man, that showed another side yes. of him. And I think at that moment, the fan base who was booing him, they were like, whoa, we we weren't happy, but we don't want to see you I know. in this situation. We yeah. don't want to make you come right. to tears, you know, and get you that upset. We're still behind you. But, you know, they they weren't happy. And you know what? He went out and he did exactly what he needed to do. He played an unbelievable hockey game the he next night. He was fantastic. He had three points, scored a beautiful goal. He was the number one star in the game. Fantastic. And game. They gave him a standing ovation, man. And you like heard his reaction in his post game interview after that game. He was like, I fucking love you guys. And, yes. You know, now Jordan Cairo, this is going to be a storyline that could propel the team. It really could. I know. You know, they've won two in a row now, new coach. I know. This takes some of the heat off of Doug Armstrong because, um, you know, there was a lot of like, you know, anger and negativity towards the Blues general manager because yep. of the firing as well. Now all of that was kind of shifted towards Jordan Cairo. Now that energy has shifted towards the love for Jordan Cairo, yep. and it's now allowed people to, I think, embrace the change, embrace Drew Bannister, embrace the team. They're playing good right now, and we'll see if that continues. Who knows, man? This could fuel this team into a playoff spot. You never know. Fans are are weird. We all are weird. But, like, blue-collar fans like they are in St. Louis, like, sometimes they need to show, you need to show them emotion mm-hmm. because – you know, a lot of guys are fucking working concrete all day. They spend time, they spend money, and they go down to the Scott Trade or Enterprise yeah. Center and they spend their money. And then when they see these guys that are on this pedestal, yeah. they love them. Mm-hmm. But when you act cocky mm-hmm. and you don't care, mm-hmm. like, man, they're going to turn on you quick. But once you show humility mm-hmm. and you're vulnerable, yeah. like you brought out of him, you had to do that. Yeah. Right when I saw that, what did I say? I go, that's the best thing that could happen. Yeah. Now, Jordan Cairo saved him. Saved him. But listen to me. By him getting, you know, showing that real emotion. Once you cry as a professional athlete, though, you're still going to be a meme for a long, long time. Whether you're T.O., Tr- mm-hmm. that's my quota back. Yeah. Whether you're Ryan Smith, crying Smith. Yeah. You know, he's never going to let that down. But as far as Blues fans are concerned, yeah. they like you again because yeah. you showed that you're real. You're not some fantasy hockey player yeah. that's making 64 million bucks now, let in me, a blue collar time. And I'll say this too. Um, yeah, things didn't end great between Cairo and Craig Berube, but they both invested a lot of time with one another. Yeah. Okay. It's true. Cairo was an all star player. He was named fastest skater at the all star game. He became an elite player, which ultimately got him the contract that he's playing under right now while playing under. Craig Berube. Berube spent a lot of time with this kid. You know, they didn't just hate each other the way that people would assume, but obviously it gets to a point where sometimes it's just not working. And the the relationship, it's just gotten to a point where maybe it's not, you know, where it should it's be. Normal. And it's just, you know, it's it got happens, it's it's dude. it's gotten to that point. But I asked Craig Berube about Kairu too in our conversation that we had. 
I talked to him privately about Kairou. I talked to him publicly about Kairou in our in the interview that I did with with Craig Berube the next day after Jordan had his meltdown. And I thought he gave a great answer. And he said, "Listen, I don't think he really intended in term to for it to sound or for it to come out the way that he said it." Like, I think his intentions were a little bit different. If Jordan Cairo had to do that all over again, I think it's a learning experience that no matter how well you know a reporter or how comfortable you think you are, and if it's just you and him, you know, whatever you say can be taken and made public, and it can be used against you. you got to be smart in terms of what you say. Yeah, he was not smart about that. But I do think that he was just walking away like, I'm done with this. I talked yesterday. Well, he it's a said, game day. do you want to talk about your – um? relationship with Craig Ruby and I think no comment listen for for Jordan Cairo like I remember talking to him at the beginning of the year and I said hey you want to talk about your uh how how well you're playing defensively because that was such a talk coming into the season yeah. can he be more committed defensively and you know develop this you know all-around game and be more of a 200 foot player and all that and I remember him saying no comment no comment just like kind of like joking around like no comment not talking about it. I don't want to get it in my head whatever because he was like leading the blue all blues forwards and like block passes or something like that in the defensive end, some analytic. I'll or take whatever. that. Okay, whatever. That was showing that he was making that commitment. But for him to say like doing the conversation, it's the morning skate, by the way. You know, Jordan Kyrie was available the day before, sitting at a stall in practice when all the media is there. Right after Doug Armstrong's press conference, yeah, anybody could have gone and talked to him at that point in time, gotten some comments out of him. For me, when you know that there is an issue between a player and a coach. And I'm not saying the reporter did any, anything wrong, but by posting that, you know what you're doing. It's not like, well, I didn't expect this to blow up. Yeah. Well, maybe you didn't expect it to blow up the way that it did with 20,000 fans raining down booze, but you certainly understand that it's going to get a reaction. And whatever he says is going to get a reaction because people want to know what was going on between he and the coach. Everyone knew that they weren't on the same page. You know, he was taken off the number one power play. He was demoted to the third line, all that type of stuff, yeah. right? So, you know, when he says no comment, he's not my coach anymore, listen, he didn't choose the best words. No. But I don't, I don't think he was anticipating that that comment was going to be taken and made public. But that's the learning experience. When you are a player, whatever you say to a reporter – when it's on the record, it it can be used, you know, <laughs> publicly, and it may not be. Yeah, but he's not a kid either, man. No, like, you can't I treat know. him like a kid. He's twenty five years old. He's yeah. making a ton of money. No, like, that's what I mean. He done but, fucked but up. But still, on it's a learning experience. I don't care if you're twenty five or twenty. You know, yeah. like you learn at different stages throughout your career, especially in a market like this where the media is pretty good to you, right? I don't think you're you're anticipating something Media's like that. Media is pretty good to you in St. Yeah, Louis, just so yeah, you know. Yeah, I just don't think he anticipated yeah. that comment to be thrown out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, you need to. So 100%. he fucked that up, but I don't think he was trying to be malicious like, fuck him. I think no. he was just like, I'm done talking. I got I to gotta go. Right. And so what he said at the very end, like, no, nah, he's not my, he's my coach anymore. Sometimes the best go. time to have those conversations are not on a morning skate. It's maybe even on the road. It's like, hey, let's meet in the lobby, have yeah, a coffee. Yeah, let's sit down and talk. Let's sit so down. You're, you're... Let them play a couple of games with the new coach. Maybe have some success. Yeah. Now maybe re reflect on what went wrong with the previous coach. Why didn't it work? You know, sometimes timing is everything. You're catching them in a situation where emotions are heavy. Emotions are raw. But as a he hadn't even played a game yet under the new coach. I and, know, but... and everyone's kind of blaming him and like he he's catching on to some of that too. But I don't probably just didn't want to talk about it, and he he did not handle it the right way. Yeah, but like. If I'm in Jeremy Rutherford's shoes or yours in that situation, I don't care if you don't want to talk about it. Yeah. I don't care if you have a game. I'm doing my job. Sure. And I'm going to ask you yeah. that. So you better give me a legit answer. But I'm just saying, like, sometimes to truly get a story out of it. I know. Because that's a story in and of itself. You know, may, so, so for example, if it was me and I went to try to do that story on game day and he said, no comment, I don't want to talk, he's not my coach. I wouldn't even probably think to put that on Twitter, even though there's nothing wrong with it. Hey, he did it and whatever. It's all good. That's what he chose to do. I would probably revisit it with the player a couple of days later. Hey, listen, let's. T I want to talk to, talk to you. The about old it. Andy, though. Yeah, well, the old Andy. The old Andy. Gotcha. So anyway, man, listen. It, it all it all worked out. Sometimes things happen for a reason. And if if the if the tweet wasn't made and the fans didn't boo, then who's to say Kyrou ends up playing the way that he did the other night? 
and being the number one star and now having the fan base behind him and giving this team and the organization a jolt yeah, they when, when they needed it, yeah. right? Mark andre Fleury, by but, the way, not starting tonight real quick, in, in uh, Pittsburgh. Which is odd. Could be his last time Excuse ever me. there, right? I got the – oh, God. I ate a lot over the weekend. Again. Sorry. You stop eating so much. Oh, it's the holidays. You're allowed to do that, actually. Sorry, I won't eat. I'll, I'll be like you. I just won't eat anything. Dwindle down enough. Noon, noon to eight. I just said that uh, That's the window. Cairo is, uh, you know, he's off in St. Louis, but anywhere he goes, man, he's going to be Cairo. He's going to be all this shit. It's and rightfully good. so. It's all good. This shit happens, man. You put him on one of these other teams, he'd be a, even more of a superstar. Maybe. Maybe not. These teams that run and gun it with their skill. Yeah, he might be dashing. I've money. always liked Jordan Cairo a lot, man. I know a lot of people have their own opinion. I've always had a great relationship with him. And uh, we'll get him on the pod. You dude. see that ability. Let's oh, get him on we're going to get him on. Yeah. We talked about it. Yep. He's yep. going to be yep. sitting right here. Yeah. No, we'll have the setup a little different. Why don't you take off that day, actually? You don't even have to come I, in. Well, let me know. <laughs> I could, God, you could just. Can I just on. do it by myself? Yeah, it'd be awesome. You know. <laughs> and he wants to do everything by himself. It just, That's not it just true. It doesn't work out. That Can't way. believe you say that. I just. Um, what'd you get me for Christmas? No holiday exchange. Something. You'll see. Ooh. You'll see. Really? Um, Mark Andre Fleury, real quick before we get into Jay Pandolfo, baby. Yeah. We're two hours in. Head coach of uh, Boston University. Yeah. The best job. I would take Great that. Great guy. Yeah. He's a good job. We'll yep. talk about that in the close. Yeah. After the interview. But, you know, Mark Andre Fleury could be his last game ever in Pittsburgh. I, I know, I'm sure people are jumping on John Hines right now for. Not starting him. Yeah. And listen, every win's important. Every point's important. The team's Yikes. going the right way. That is a interesting decision. A decision that could come back to bite the Minnesota Wild. If they don't win this game and they play like shit, this coach is going to be second guess. This won't be the best way to get off on the right foot with the fans and whatever. But I, I don't get caught up in it, man. They got all the information. They know what's best for the team. But... This is a decision that's made in concert, in my opinion, between the general manager as well. It's not like just the coach is just going on his own. I'm sure he talked to Billy Guerin about that. And Billy's got a lot of history, like John Hines, in that Pittsburgh organization. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a little surprised just because of that, from a sentimental standpoint, his potentially his final game in front of those Pittsburgh fans. Man, I say you start his ass, but it is what it is. It is what it is. He'll be okay. And Mike Sullivan's probably a little bit on the hot seat, too. They just got shit kicked. Dude. God, they got shit kicked by Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dubas is like losing his mind, throwing shit. They're you know? Why is he doing that again? Stop doing that. Cameras on you, man. He no, he's, he knows that. Stop doing it. Why is he doing? I mean, are you like more emotional than like the? He's like uh, I'm showing everybody I'm emotional. How into it? You're playing against Toronto, so you know the Toronto cameras. Yeah. To me, that's a little manufactured, man. That's goofy. Like it's almost like you're doing that on purpose. I'm mad again. Like, like stop being like I am the intense. General manager, like, I didn't see you do that against other teams. You do that when Toronto is there. He can't throw anyway. I could tell he can't throw a ball. Like He, he might throw the ball so now like you're, Stephen A. Smith. Now you're like the – they're, they're, ch Fauci. they're chanting your name, yeah. and you do that when you're playing against Toronto. So you know it's going to blow up. Just eat that one. Come dude. on, dude. I get it. Don't be – don't be He's like, like – Dang it. Don't be the uh, – He threw like Obama did on the first pitch. Don't like – you don't need attention that bad. That, that's making it about you. If anything, yeah. just be out of the just, cameras, dude. Just get out of there. You and Spez, just go in a different room. The game's over. I honestly saw that. I'm like, oh, is that like from last year? No, 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 no. Like you're doing that again, but you're doing that against Toronto? That's too much. It's kind of a loser move. I don't, I don't like that. I, I know. That's why I said that. Like, it's like I'm not calling He's like this. Dang it. I'm not calling him a loser, so I'm not saying no, that. No, but it just it's looked just nerdy. It's like. Calm down. Get it together. All right. Yeah. And don't do that when you're going against your former team that happens to have the, you know, most media coverage in the league, and it's going to get a lot of attention. You, you don't need to be that guy. You don't need all the attention all the time. No. And so, I like Dubas. I like him now. Dubas. He's done some corny stuff. So, so what is du du it's Dubas. I like the Dubas, and we're going to get him Mr. on here. Mr. Dumbass. Remember, like, that commercial? But, Mr. Dumbass. Like, I have everything going on, Mr. Dumbass. Mr. Dumbass, he's like, the name's Dumas. Remember that commercial? Dubas. You remember that commercial? I kind of. 
Oh, Dumont. The guy's yeah, in a yeah, meeting. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. like, yeah. Mr. Dumbass, yeah. let me tell you what I'm going to do for you. Like, and at the very they end. They lost 7 nothing in they that They got shit kicked. Mike Sullivan, you know, maybe. We'll see. You know, I will say this. Hockey's different than other sports in the sense that uh, sometimes just a coaching change just makes all the difference in the world. It's a new voice. Yeah. You know, like. It's like a new tryout. You cannot, for whatever reason, stay in one place too long. It just doesn't work, dude. Not in hockey, man. Not I look hockey. at how many times it's happened here. And I, I saw Ken Hitchcock win the Jack Adams the year that he took over. And Craig Ruby winning the Stanley Cup the year that he took over. Yeah. Not to mention Andy Murray and you know <laughs> Davis Payne, who was an interim guy, wasn't even thought of to be the next head yeah. coach, gets a contract extension. Yeah. And this guy, Drew Bannister, I mean, I don't think he was brought here as the leading candidate. But yeah. you're always the leading candidate when you're the only guy behind the bench. Yeah, well, you're the guy that the minors that has all Well, I'm the just saying, when you get here, and but he was brought here primarily because they didn't have any other options. They didn't have anybody on the Blues staff who has any head coaching experience. Nope. So they had Even to bring Steve up Ock, the guy yeah. from the American League, unless it was a situation like when Doug Armstrong hired Ken Hitchcock, he just knew who he was bringing in. So you're bringing in the guy immediately. Yeah. Didn't, no, have, didn't have that guy. I like Drew Bannister, man. It was funny. No, like, he's cool. We've talked quietly, I like man. Humble, he's cool. I like humble coaches that haven't been in the spotlight yet. Yeah. That still drive their Subaru, and they haven't made that much money. And I know mm-hmm. he played in the show for a little bit, but Drew Bannister is so funny. Like, uh, they asked him a question. Maybe it was I, you I, that it asked was me. Yeah, Andy. Andy always asks questions. And listen, I sharp Andy, but like when it comes <laughs> to that, he's the fucking best at it, hundred percent. And Bally's knows that too. By the way, they should, because the only time that you fucking blow up in hockey is when you fucking ask something crazy or you get to the bottom of something. Anyway, Drew Bannister, he comes. He's like, they go. Andy goes, Hey, has anybody ever? recognized you he's like well actually yeah I, I got off the plane and this guy comes up to me he goes hey you're the new blues coach and i and drew's like yeah i am and can i take a selfie and drew's like that was the first selfie i've ever taken with anybody yeah and i think that's great i know i do you're like you're he not admits that he admits it and i and i saw the kid that did it i'm like i know that kid <laughs> he's everywhere yeah. he's everywhere no wonder he knew yeah. who you were he's a super fan and i'm like that's just i like that mm-hmm. it's just pure I like, know. go there, you're in a clean slate, yeah. you're not Mr. Popular, you still drive your goddamn Subaru, and, like, you haven't made that much money yet, and you're just there to coach. Right. You're, it's not about you're you. You're just a hockey coach. You're just a hockey coach Good that's trying to Canadian make it. Boy. You don't care about attention. You don't care about no. the knickknacks no. of things. And honestly, that's, I the, like that's that. the type of coach I would want. There you go. I don't want my coach out there starving for attention there all the time. There you go. Having no. to get attention. It's my team. It's me. It's me. No, it's not about you. Mm-hmm. It's about the players, man. It's about the players. And Bruby didn't do that either. He just got he got it inadvertently because he's yeah. cool. You know why he got it? Because he didn't act like he no. didn't want any attention. He didn't ask for it. Never. And that's why people loved him. Though. Right. And he's hard. Right. But I like this Drew Bannister, man. He's he seems pretty damn cool. Twelve he's, years on the bus, dude. That's a long time. Grind in the bus. Guys shitting everywhere, farting. <laughs> Guys have food. There's like there's like Italian dressing all over the floor. Oh, like you're, you have to wear a suit. Oh like my god! Guys are shitting in the back of the bus, and you're you like, better not do that. You better not do. You that. shit in the back, and I'm back there kicking my feet up on a cooler. Like you're getting fined. That's what happens in our studio. You're getting. That's what happens you're getting in our fined. Studio. I told you that's what happens in my studio. Like I'm not. I'm holding it in. Me too. Like well, you don't go to the bathroom, which is very odd. You're like a woman. Just so you know, another one. How that, do you know? My wife doesn't go to the bathroom. How do that you much. know? Andy's like. How do you know? Because I know you don't go to the bathroom. You don't know that. Because when you don't eat, you don't have anything to go to the bathroom with. Like you don't have anything in your system. You don't go to the bathroom that much. Mm. You know, it's all good because you don't eat anything, which is fine. Well, it's our holiday edition. Yeah. Of the Merry Canvas Christmas Trip podcast. All y'all. Merry Christmas to all we y'all. We love you guys. All right, let's get to uh, to Jay Pandolfo. Very, very cool guy. It was yeah. like a. A very chill um, conversation. Honestly, like you know, Cam's known him for a long time. They played together, but yeah. I think both of us, and you can probably agree, like we're we're like always interested, like the lifestyle of a college coach too, totally. and like everything they have to deal with at the college level. Yeah, also. Man. So we get into a lot of that, and he's got a hell of a team. You know? Yeah, like a lot of like you know future energy. I did ask you know? a stupid question though. Uh, I go, hey, people, a couple of them. A couple of them? Oh, what was the other one? Know. I don't even remember. Yeah. So I go, uh, you know, like I remember being young and, and it, Jay was on the team. Like everybody always talked about how underrated you were. And he's like, I don't think about that. What I meant was you didn't get paid that as much as you should. Uh. That's what the guys were talking. I just didn't feel like I should have said that. Because yeah, he's like, well, underrated. I was a big like, part of the team. Like, yeah, but no one. But yeah. he was underrated 100%, okay. just like okay. Sergey Breland. But he should have got paid more. That's all I heard when I was young. 
When I first got there in 05, like all the older guys would mm-hmm. say, fucking Pando needs more money. Fucking Pando. Usually it's the other way around. He's getting paid too much. Yeah. They always said that he needed more money. And I should have said that because he's kind of like, You should have no. clarified. I should have clarified. Okay. My bad. All right. Other let's, than that, let's it's get all to good. It. Hey, First Form brings us the Camus Group podcast yeah. each and every week here. Right the, here. Uh, at Half Coast Studios, baby. Cam is a very orange today. He's got his hunting hat on. Looks good. Get all these energy drinks. Get the still in t- plenty of time for Christmas too. Hook my dad up, man. Um, I hook my dad. Up. Uh, protein bars. Oh, let me uh, show you right quick. Oh, by the way, this red hoodie. Right. This hoodie is oh, a. Uh, this hoodie is first form. Uh, that gives you to show everything they have. Hold on. What do you have? Hold on. Jeans right here. Oh, Would you I'm stop? Sorry, take dude, that I'm off so now. Sorry. I just wanted to, I wanted to take a deep breath. Don't do that yeah, to okay, me. Go no, no. <laughs> go ahead. Right 20 grams here. of protein, baby. Get you going. Yeah. Damn good. I like these the best. These, uh, what is it? The uh, the barbecue. Seasoned barbecue. Yeah, yeah that's They're a not good spicy. One. No. Crush these bad There's boys. an original that's not spicy. 20 grams of protein. kind of a spicy one, too. Um, God, they're good. Don't eat that on the air, if you don't mind. I don't do that, well, I'm Andy. Just saying, like, don't I don't do that. I'm not rude. Yeah. Andy tried one thing. He tri- see, Andy tries to find his like shtick, but he hasn't Cam done it yet. Uh, everything Andy off tries to find. He's like, Cam's you know, like, Cam's I'm, like, gonna like e- I'm gonna wear a mask today. Then I'm gonna eat on the and everybody chirps him. He's like, I gotta find something Cam's different. Cam's like, oh, I, I'm gonna steal that from you and like I, I'm gonna say yoink. I all have the time. so many different things. I don't even know what I'm doing. And I have sticks out the Shit wazoo. Like, Andy's Andy everything. tries to find. So, it's all good. You'll get there eventually. You'll totally get there. Sad. He's going to do the mask today. He's going to eat tomorrow. And then people are going to be like, no, he we don't want that. He just doesn't steal my style. That's the only thing he doesn't steal. What, what do you do? What's, what's, your <laughs> this is trade, what's your trademark? A lot of things. What is it? Give me one. Asking questions. On an interview? No, that's your job. <laughs> what's your trademark? Like, what's your, like, little saying that you do? Mm-hmm. You get free sushi at Bellman? That's a lot. And flavored water. So what is it? No, swing and what, Where's your swing you and get dip? and flavored water. Where's your swing and dip? Where's yours? Right there. Okay. Where's your yoink? I brought up Seth. Where's your Seth? I created him. I created him. God, you, what is going on here? I said you go to the guy at the. Uh, Where is yours? It's okay. It'll come. Hockey shop. I got You, you have want, to use. I'll our give li- you. I'll give you one. Okay. Because I got so many. In the, <laughs> I don't even know I have them. Like, take one of mine. Okay. Just don't steal hey, the one I'm hey, doing. You got to use our link though. Firstform.com slash, slash Camus Trick. It's yeah. easy to do. Just use yeah, our link. Use our link. Helps us out a lot. Yeah. Protein powder. Everything. Everything, dude. Um, Gut health. Yes. To clothes, yes. to fucking beef sticks. Firstform.com slash Cameron Strick. Yeah. Check it out. Use our link. Illinois Recovery Center, baby. 888-743-0971. Oh, guys. Just like I said with Thanksgiving. They're reaching out to me. Christmas Christmas time <laughs> is coming. And again, you're going to find your cousin, your uncle, your aunt, your little whatever, your little brother. It's all going to come out. Don't neglect these kids, man. You know the the one guy's not gonna say anything. Everybody else is gonna get all the attention. And then little Johnny over here is just like, fuck man, I don't know what to do. I'm just drinking the whole time. I don't have anything going on. The, I'm college, an the college kids are getting all the attention. The college kids are getting all the attention. Hannah's got a four point oh. What sorority Hannah, are you rushing? Corey's got that. Like Corey's doing so good. Corey's at this, blah blah blah. What's little Johnny doing? How's Johnny? Uh struggling. He's struggling. No one cares about Johnny. He's drinking more, drinking more. Then he says something stupid, everybody ignores him. Until your cousin Kyle, dude, the fucking cool Kyle, who gets the chicks, who understands it. Mm-hmm. You would think he'd be the dick, but he's the one kid that comes over and talks to little Johnny. He said, man, you okay? Are you all right? Mm-hmm. And little Johnny's like, no, man, I need help. No one even pays attention to me. I'm an alcoholic. I'm addicted to painkillers. I'm spending money. I'm stealing. No one talks to me. No one gives me attention. My parents hate me. Mm. That's the kid you got to look after. That's the kid that needs yeah, help. He does. And he's savable. You know what I mean? Can I ask you a real question? Yeah. Do you ever go to rehab to like just reset and then like continuing to like live a similar life but at moderation? Or do you have to just go cut it completely? Depends on where you're at. If you're going to rehab, you probably need to go sober. Just get it all the way out. Okay. Was that a bad question? Not at all. I'll tell you when your your questions are bad. Mm -hmm. When it's not hockey related questions, sometimes it gets stupid. That is not a dumb question at all. There's some guys that can do that. But most of the time, like, if I had surgery, like, I'm probably not taking painkillers still. Even if I had something, like, fucking blew my Achilles out, I'm probably not going to do it. No, you can't. Kate won't let you probably either. Probably not. You know what I mean? Because that triggers something. Then that motherfucking demon's mm-hmm. there, baby. I can't have that anymore. No. So, maybe, maybe not. I, I would say, if you're going to rehab, you're already in that big funk. You can't touch it anymore. Okay. 
Let right. people smoke weed, and yeah. that's fine, or whatever. Can you do that still? Depends on what you're in for. Mm-hmm. And depends Are you triggered by how you everything? handle it? Exactly. Will that trigger you, you to all of a sudden start doing the other If you're a cokehead, you got to fucking cut off alcohol. Because what do you do when you're drunk? What's the first thing you think about when you're drunk? You're like this. You want to do a fucking gangster line, baby. When you're wasted, that's when you want to do coke the most. Because you're fucked up and you need to get fucking up again. Because your booze is a downer, dude. Mm-hmm. So anytime you're an alcoholic and you crave cocaine, it's always when you're drinking because you want to get that fatty going mm-hmm. and get that high. Right. And once you do that, man, you're like, oh, God, what did I do? Oh, God, what did I do? And it goes away and you're down. and 888 Check them out. They're going to help you. Chrissy hey, Pondoff, Eric Conley. Love you both. Real shout quick, out. Love you guys. Before we get to test on roofing, what do you think of the e-bug? embarrassing it's a i mean i love the kid and i love the family and it's a great joey sp- yeah yeah he's great joey kid. o'brien and what's I, up baby and it, so it's not about him no but i talked to a bunch of goalies like about this i think the whole e-bug the fact that it doesn't exist in any other sport no. and the fact that you can't make a cap exception exception for a back of goaltender embarrassing. and you got to put a kid in there that isn't Capable of playing at the level required. Capable of playing at that level? He's not capable of playing at a high school level. Of playing at that level required to play in the NHL. Just slap in the face to any goaltender in the minors. Yeah. You got kids in the minors right now grinding it out for to the the Texas Stars who just do anything just to go sit on the bench. I know. And an e bug gets to do it because of a rule that doesn't allow the player who's grinded it out and trained 24 7. Just to sit for a complete game as a backup, he can't even do it. So the, this is not about any of the e bugs. That's the rule. You got to have one. So whoever, whatever e bug gets into a game or sits on a bench, it's not their fault. But the league needs to be looks bush league. They dude. need to completely. I'm watching NFL football yesterday, and, and I played football, Cam. Uh, both sides of the ball, hey, actually. Go ahead. And could you imagine, like, okay, you're not allowed to have your backup quarterback is hurt. But because of cap issues, the guy who's changing kegs at his family restaurant, he is now, he hadn't played football now in years. He's almost 30. He hasn't played quarterback. In, he, he's the backup quarterback tonight. Or in a, in, a, in a baseball game that the kid who hasn't pitched in 15 years, who never played professionally, yeah, player do it. is now going to come in and close out the ninth inning. Do you know a few years back, they almost had to have an e-bug. Well, I shouldn't say almost had to have an e-bug, but they had to have an e-bug ready to play when Bennington got hurt when Billy Huso came in. Yeah. In a playoff game because the Blues minor league team was still playing. Yeah. They didn't have any other goalies here. No, like, it's, a, it's Bush This league. is like one of the – and I talked to retired goaltenders, superstar goaltenders, current goaltenders, and to a man they say this is the dumbest, worst, most embarrassing rule in sports, not just hockey. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Um – it's it is it's kind of bush league, but it only happens here and there. So do you pay 120 grand for a guy to be around your team as a third? No, goalie? you let him call the guy up. They were in Chicago. He's right down the road. Well, that was a cap issue, so it was a little different. But I'm saying, it, but like, what gotta, if you can't get anybody? Shouldn't you have a third guy waiting? So you're not allowed to have make a cap exception. You have to play short for one game, then you can call him up. Yeah, it's goofy. So they could call him up after the St. Louis game. But they couldn't call him up for the St. Louis game, and Bush I understand league, salary dude. cap and whatever. Maybe you got to leave yourself room and for that type of situation. Well, just, just but just make an emergency have, situation. Let them get a backup goaltender up it's here. It's better for the league. It's better for the game. What you if know, he had to go in? He'll get lit up like a Christmas tree. But although well, David Ayers didn't, yeah, but he should have. So embarrassing. For so Toronto. how would Toronto like? You're getting and the Foster like, kid. You know yeah. they, they put him in in Chicago. I think Joe Quimble did that. Uh, Paul Stas- he put against Stasny. I remember Stasny got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably like, the fuck am I doing? Oh my god, like, that's god awful. I, I just think it's it's, league, it's yeah. embarrassing for the league. Yeah, um, test on roofing. That's not embarrassing. I told you, man, these tornadoes are coming. I told you about I the know. kid. We don't know that for sure, though. It just happened, dude. Yeah. Quit telling me you don't know shit. You said next when you year, don't know after shit. The beginning but of just, the year. Yeah, this doesn't count. You're not right about this one. I won't say anything more than. No, but I want no, you to. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You do no, it. No, okay. I'm sorry. I don't mean that. No, go ahead. No, no. Now no, you... he knows everything. No, 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 no. Go no, ahead. no, no, no. Do it by okay. your, your dream. It's your dream. Go ahead. Do, do <laughs> live for you. Go ahead. I'll sit here. For the rest of the show. Okay. You're right about this one. Go ahead. Go ahead. What? 
Let's talk about Tesla and Rufin, the weather. Dude, there's going to be crazy weather. It's 50 fucking degrees out. In St. Louis this year, it's going to be weird, warm, wet, rainy, and fucking storms are going to happen. Mark my word on that. Nashville just got goddamn rocked. A two-year-old fucking flew into a tree, and he's okay. Don't tell me this is not going to happen. Nashville is three and a half I hours can't away. Believe Don't that. act like That's this ain't going to. It of just Oz fucking stuff. missed us. We just had an earthquake going on. That might fuck your house up too. There's all kinds of shit. This is going to be a weird winter. And Tess on, Roofing's wait, Tess on Roofing is waiting for you. That's all. Oh, that's Ain't a, that big of a deal. Like that so shit goes down, which yes. is going to happen. You got Tess on roofing, roofing to help you out. And when it gets hot, you get the nano shield, so you save money. That's what you do. Best thing you've ever said. This is going to be a weird winter, and Tess that's on Roofing is I've waiting for you. You I denounce like me well, like, you, like you're some well, weather woman, which you're not. <laughs> weather person. Woman. Do you know that linesman? You know in the NHL how you have... You have referees with the orange stripes and then the linesmen? No, I didn't play. <laughs> Andy thinks I didn't play. He seriously thinks I didn't play hockey. That's not true. Andy thinks his hockey career is mine and my hockey career is his. And somebody tried to quote us on, on, on Twitter about that and they that? fucked it up. They were so funny. They fucked it up, They were though. so funny. Andy thinks his hockey career is mine and mine was his. That's what I meant no, to say. Because I w- when I close my you eyes and that, dream about you think being I'm a high school NHL kid player, that barely played. I'm not a. You think you're? A, I'm a high school kid that never played. First lane, first line, first power play. And then, you know, you made it. Probably the, the all time. Andy was the first one ever from St. Louis to play in the NHL. I'm probably the all time. It wasn't me. All time, it was Andy. Probably the all time leading scorer. So you go to a Centene, you see Pat Lafontaine, and you see Andy Strickland. Not my name. History of Parkway North. Probably. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so no, don't go, go ahead. Hey go Cam, ahead. go ahead. Finish this off. Go um. Ahead. God, what was I oh, saying? Now me. I forgot what I was me. saying. You don't need me. Now Go I ahead. forgot what I was saying. My high school player. Go ahead. You're an NHL player. Put your mask on. Put your, please. <laughs> Put it back <laughs> over your head. <laughs> Put it back. Test on roofing, baby. Give him a call today. Get the nano shield. Test on yeah. roofing.com. Real deal. Sparks and sparks.com saved the tournament this past weekend. Unfortunately, he got sick, but wasn't the skates that were an issue. No. Thank God. You don't want to toe pick it and fall into the boards 100 miles an hour because the skates are fucked Can't control up. sickness, but you can control your skates. Yeah, damn right you can. You can control dipshit boy Seth sharpening your skates, now, too. Now, what happens picking his belly when button the family is coming over? He's eating over. Cheetos out of his belly button. Oh, like my God. Like a nut bag. What happens? Looking up weird stuff. What happens when the um, family's coming over? he steals over your wife's underwear? You have to, oh, God. Is he doing that again? Invite him over. See what happens. No, I don't want him over. See what happens. But what happens? It's family. You have to have him over. He's snooping around. Hey, oh, how, where's Seth? Lock your door. He's upstairs. You tell the kids before they come over. Guys, if Where, cousin Seth tries to go? go upstairs, tell me. Where'd he go? Oh, he's upstairs. Ah, oh, son of a Seth, bitch. Seth, what are you doing up there, bud? Come on down. No, oh, just I'm just looking around. <laughs> he <wants his> <laughs> do, 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 do. He's oh, got wait. panties in his pocket. He's got <laughs> painkillers in his pocket. Oh, God. Looking, look th- looking through the medicine cabinet. Looking through your medicine cabinet, stealing... Dirty and clean on Yeah. What are you doing tomorrow, Seth? I mean, working at the hockey shop. Got to be there at 10. I'll probably show up at 11. He's collecting bones, too, from animals throughout the neighborhood. Very bizarre. Oh, God. I didn't know. I didn't know. My my kid's a good kid. He's going to college. No, he's killing animals and stealing painkillers and underwear. Fuck this kid. Look at his history on his computer. I saw this interview of this guy who, like, he killed somebody when he was 13, and he's set to get out soon. He served, like, 40 years. He wants to have a positive impact on society. Do you do you give him the benefit of the doubt? He was thirteen. Yeah, I do. If he fucking went thirty years in jail at thirteen, 40. killing somebody, you never know. You know what I mean? I could have been. I I could have done something stupid. Yeah. At a young age, killed somebody. What with my age car. does that stop? Where you just don't give him the benefit of the doubt anymore? Oh, depends on what they do. Kill some somebody. Of, some of these psycho fucking kids, man. They're fifteen, are killing people yeah. gunpoint just for their cell phone. Go, you're going to jail. You're going to jail or beating some poor old lady mm. up and curb stomping her. And you're like, he's a good kid. He just must have made a mistake. That's not a mistake. Sparks.com, You baby. killed this poor lady. You shot this poor girl with your, your illegal gun to yeah. steal her cell phone. You're going to jail. Okay. I don't give a shit if you're 14, 15, Jeez. 16. What did you do wrong? Okay, I didn't uh, what mean, did a 13-year-old yes. kid do? It's murder. Like, what do you do? Oh, How? No, what I do you do? I didn't read the whole story. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't no, the every story. every every crime is different. Killed you evaluate somebody. every just like when cops get in trouble for killing somebody, you don't lump them all in one yeah. one category. You every every one of those uh uh every everything's completely yeah. different. Anytime you shoot somebody, you save somebody, whatever the case is, it's all different. You Sparks. can't lump it all baby. Use our promo code Cam and Strick. Hell yeah. And do it today. And don't be Seth. 
That, what a, you talk about a great Christmas present, man. So you're somebody that's going to be happy this time of year. Yeah. Yep. Use that promo code CAMASTRICK. It's going to save you more money than Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Bellman and Bellman.com. Cam, at Bellman, you get now what? Swinging dicks. But you get flavored water, baby, and sushi. It's a good shtick you got there, Andy. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's just like a... Like, find something. You're a clever guy. Like that? Like, yeah, but you stole that from no, me. No, I like this. Yeah, but you stole that from me. Find your own I mean, rhythm. Swinging dicks. Sushi water. So, flavored, wa flavored water and sushi. Yeah, that's awesome. Flavored water People and sushi. People are laughing at that. Find right, Now you go again. Swinging dicks. Sushi and flavored water. So you can do different things. No, but, like, you steal my... That's all good. You can, you can have, like, take, different take things. Take it, take it. <laughs> Take the swinging dick thing. I'll find something new. Bellman and Bellman.com, Cam. They are amazing. Everybody gets that. Troy, Missouri, by the way. Everybody gets credit <sighs> approval. You know that? Yeah. No, that's another thing, too. You can have shitty credit, and we'll take care of you, which is cool. You know what I mean? Winter is here. It brings challenges for your driving, Cam. Icy weather. You can you, you don't be driving it. icy. There'll be some icy days. Vehicles uh, that don't start, the poor performance. Put those winter worries to bed with the help of Bellman Automotive in Troy, baby. Troy, Missouri. Bellman always has a great selection of all-wheel drive vehicles, SUVs, trucks, Jeeps, you name it. New and used, Cam. We got new copy points here. They, they, we're, we're, we're changing things up, man. Everything's new for the winter now. For the holidays, Bellman wants to thank their customers and community for a great 2023. And they look forward to serving everyone again in 24, baby. There you go. Now you're on it today. Say hi to Danny boy. Danny, what's up? And say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Dale. Dale. Merry Christmas, Dale. God damn, boy. And Kenny. 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 Merry Christmas, all you guys. We love all you out there in Troy, Missouri at Bellman. We love you guys, man. Love y'all, y'all. Merry Jay Christmas. Jay Pandolfo, baby. Jay Pandolfo, good dude. Enjoy this on the Camus Trick Podcast. The Camus Trick Podcast is brought to you by First Form, baby. Use our link and do it today. www.firstform.com slash Strick. Get jacked now. They are the real deal. Get that protein. Check out the apparel. Eat those bars. And drink those energy drinks. Firstform.com slash Strick. Yeah. Now on to the interview. Dude, I'm 250, Pando. Are you? Yeah. If I went into training camp, Lou would be like, you're fucking out of here. Yeah, he'd be, he would not he'd be, be happy pissed. about that. He'd yeah, get he'd you on the pissed. scale. Get on the scale, man. That's discipline, though, Pando. It like, is. That, that made us discipline, man. Getting on. Oh. Not too many other teams did that. No. Incredible. Everything. <laughs> no. Everything. Do you do that with your, with your guys? Do you make them get on the scale when they get to the rink every day? I, I do not do that. Uh, <laughs> our, our, our strength coach, though, he's, uh, he's on top of our guys. It's, uh, it's important for sure. Like we, We're pretty disciplined, so he does, our strength coach does an incredible job. Hey, man, we just roll. Yeah, so we, go. we just have conversation just like this. So it's, yeah, 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 baby. Where's your IT guy? I mean, your strength guy is good. Where's your IT Where's guy? Your you IT you guy? need one, man. Come on. I figured Janny was doing the IT stuff, and that's why it was all messed up. That's, I thought that was the issue. Janny, he's like, uh, uh, you see the button, Pando? Press, hit the hit the button. The, the press every button the, you got. The rectangle button. <laughs> I was trying. Dude. Nothing was nothing was going there. All you, good, baby. You watching film today? What do you? You guys are on break now, right? Yeah, no, we we've been off since uh, December second. Typically, we would have played last weekend, but we had to make a schedule change early in the year, so we got a long break. We don't play till the 29th, so. Get a little downtown uh, downtime right now, which is is kind of nice. I got three kids, so they're all playing hockey, so I get to get to their games and everything. So it's kind of nice. So what else do you do for your downtime? Like, do you hunt? Are you fishing? Nope. Like, what do you do? Hockey, no everything? Hunting. No hunting. A lot of hockey, right? I mean, that's where I'm at right now. With it's a lot like coaching in college is a lot of other stuff that really has nothing to do with hockey that you have a chance to catch up on during these breaks. Um, I mean, you got to stay on top of these guys with uh, academics, making sure they're, you know, getting their schoolwork done, making sure they're doing their finals, making sure they're getting good grades. There's a lot of different things. And then also like housing and all that sort of, it just never ends. There's always something going on and then recruiting too. So right now too, gives us an opportunity to do some recruiting there's a ton of uh, prep school tournaments going on uh, right now, Christmas tournaments, so it allows us to get out to those and and see some future, hopefully future Terriers. Are you one of those coaches? I mean, it's the break right now. Are you like, 
All right, what are you doing? Are you getting your workout in? Are you eating chips on the couch all day? Are you skating? Like, you don't have, like, control. You can't oversee them. Like, they're gone for a couple of weeks. That's got to be a little bit stressful for some coaches, I would think. Yeah, definitely. I, I think uh, we have a good group of, of guys. They, they, they're they on top of it. Um, and, again, like our strength coach, he gives them a plan. Because it is. It, we're not playing for, like, four weeks. That That is a long stretch. Um, so he, he has a plan, gives them all a plan, and – we trust our guys that, that they're going to do the right things over the course of the month. So when they do come back, cause we come back, we'll practice on the 27th, our first game back to the 29th. So okay. you basically let them know, like you guys, if, if you don't come ready, you're going to be exposed. So our guys are pretty good about it, but it is definitely stressful. You worry that first practice back, uh, Hopefully the guys are ready to go. I mean, they're chasing like their high school girlfriend around right yeah, now dude. in their hometown. Let them know? do their thing, Pando. <laughs> we let we let them do their thing. We we trust them. The, our guys, they certainly have fun. It's hey, a listen, little different. They're- they're great guys, by the way. I my my son was at a uh, hockey tournament at Notre Dame when you guys were up there. Oh, and nice. I ran in, I ran into so many of your guys in the elevator and whatever, man. They were they were so respect. They were so good to the little guys too, man. That's so. You know, they, they were and they were a little upset. They were headed to your video session after the first game because you guys got you guys lost right that first game and then came back and won game two. But, yeah, they were like, oh, yeah, we're headed to get to the video session. This won't be fun. Yeah, yeah, that was probably wasn't a very good one. We didn't we weren't very good early on in the year, especially that night at Notre Dame. The first night it was a it was a tough one. So but no, I'm not too hard in video. Uh, I'm, I'm not too bad. It's more try to teach them, try to try to learn from our, our mistakes. So but our guys are good. They, they're used to it. Cam, big boys. Like, I mean, are they big? Monsters. Compared to you or what? Well, compared to compared to everybody. Yeah, compared to me for sure. But I was like, damn, these guys are huge. You got a big team. We do. We got we got a really big team. We got um I think two or three guys that are like six five, six six. Um just average. I think we're like six one, almost two hundred pounds. So we that's big for a college team. Oh, big a lot of big boys. Are are you uh are you a screamer? Because when I played with you, man, like you're so cool and calm. Like I never really Seen you lose your temper, like what are like what, what kind of coach are you? I don't I don't think I lose my temper that often. Um, I think there's times when I get a little bit heated, but I try to stay in control as much as I can. And there's certain times where you, you want to explode, but I try to do the best I can to stay calm. Um, but there's certainly times where I've gone off a little bit. Um, I think it actually. It might uh, open the guy's eyes a little bit more when I do because I don't do it too often. So yeah. I think there's a time and a place for it. And, you know, you get frustrated as a coach and sometimes you can't help yourself. But I try to do it in the right way. Hey, man, is this a dream job for you? I mean, like you went there. You're like a BU legend and now you're coaching and, you know, you had the whole tradition and everything that goes with it. Is this is this like a dream situation that you're in? I, I Yeah, no no question about it. Um, I was I've been pretty fortunate with – kind of my coaching path when I started um, in Boston in player development. And um, I was going down to Providence a ton, which I lived in Boston. So it was so easy to get down there. And Bruce Cassidy and Kevin Dean were the assistant coaches down there. And they welcomed me. They, they yeah, I didn't have to be down there as much as I, I was, but I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed going on the ice. I enjoyed talking to the players, interacting with the players. The only thing, I, the first thing I noticed was though, like how often, Bruce and Kevin were just staring at their computers doing work. And I'm like, I don't think I could ever do that. And no, now, of course, this is what I do. But that that's what kind of really got me into the coaching, got me the coaching bug was you, it's just the closest thing to playing. You just yeah. feel part of it. Um, so that kind of started um, kind of my coaching career. I, even though I was doing player development, um, I just leaned towards coaching more than the management side of things. And I think Don Sweeney recognized that as well. And when Boston was making some changes with assistant coaches um, and they were going a little bit younger with their players, um, I worked with a lot of younger players. So Donnie asked me if, um, you know, coaching is something I wanted to get into and kind of gave me an opportunity, him and Claude uh, Julian, to kind of be an assistant coach at Boston, kind of be like the third guy. And that's kind of how I got my feet wet. Um, so it was, you know, a pretty easy transition for me being from Boston, um, being able to coach of the Boston Bruins, couldn't turn that opportunity down either. And, and I had a great, great experience there with um, first with Claude and, and I know Claude, Claude got let go that year, but he was great to me. Uh, I learned a lot from him and then having Bruce Cassie take over who I worked with a ton down in 
Providence was just an easy, um, easy transition. And, and he, I learned so much from him. So it was a great experience for me to kind of get those five years as an assistant coach uh, in, in Boston and in pro hockey. And then I had an opportunity to come back to BU and, and I have young kids and, and you guys know the pro hockey life. Like it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. So I was, felt like I was missing a lot of my kids uh, things. And once I had the opportunity to come back here, I, I didn't want to turn it down. I thought it was an opportunity to kind of see if I like the college game and here I am. So it's, um, it's definitely a dream job. You know, this is a place I grew up. I had so much respect for Jack Parker, who was here for 40 years um, and had such a great experience. So I'm just trying to give the guys that are playing here the experience that I had and how much I enjoyed it. And, and that's what I'm, what I'm trying to do. And, and, you know, I think we're heading in the right direction up to this point. Okay. So, okay. You coach as an assistant coach is different. You're kind of their buddy. They could talk to you in the corner. You've been through a lot. So what's the difference between coaching the pro guys and then co- head coach with the college kids? Like what, what's the difference and what pissed you? What's, is there something certain that the that, that young kids do now that the pro guys didn't do that kind of drives you nuts as a head coach? Just curious. Yeah, I think the, you know, the assistant coach in the, at the pro level, it is, there's no question. You're like, you're, you're, you're there um, kind of try to help between the players and the, and, and the head coach and, and you get, get pretty close with some of those guys. So it's pretty, it's not, it's not a tough job when it comes to that with the relationships you build with some of the guys, cause you're an assistant coach. So it's a little different as a head coach, but I think in college it's different because you spend so much time with these guys um, on a daily basis. It's a little different than pro hockey. Um, where, where you're with these guys all the time. You're not just talking about hockey. You're dealing with all the other things, all the other off ice stuff that they're dealing with. So you get pretty close with some of these guys. And I think you kind of build those relationships and, and, and you build that trust. And then when it's time to, to get on them, I think that they understand that you really do care about them. So I think that's the biggest thing is you just spend so much time with these guys on a regular basis where you can build that relationship and trust. And then you can get on them and they understand that you're, you're looking out for them and looking out for their best interests. I think that's the biggest part of it. It's a little different in pro hockey where, you know, there's big contracts and all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's a lot different that way. Um, And our guys, like I've been pretty fortunate. We have a good group of guys here. They're very respectful and they're young. These guys all want to play in the national hockey league. So their eyes and ears are open at all times. and, And it's, it's great to see. And it's a lot of fun seeing these guys grow as players and as people. All right, so how do you go about recruiting? Like, you have all these NHL picks, you know, I mean, several on your roster. You have the potential first overall pick for next year on your roster. Like, how, how do you know what you have to replace year in and year out? Like, who's going to be there, who's not going to be there? And and when recruiting these guys, are you okay getting, like, the blue chippers knowing you may only have them for a year or two? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it is difficult to project how, how long some of these guys are going to be here. So you gotta you gotta just kind of stay on top of it and try to project and, and you talk to their advisors and you talk to them and kind of see what their plans are and but it's constantly changing, especially in college hockey now with the transfer portal and everything else that goes on. Uh, I do have Joe Pereira. I don't know if you guys have heard of Joe Pereira, but he's uh he's basically does a lot of the recruiting for us. He's a legend. Like he he knows everyone. He's on top of everything. Knows what's going on throughout college hockey. So. He's been a huge help for me. He worked at UConn for 10 years. He played at Boston University, won a national championship at Boston University in 09. Uh, they had a great, great team back then. They had Colin Wilson, Bonino, Shattenkirk, Gilroy. They had a hell of a oh, yeah. lot of good players. Um, so he's very good at his job, and he's helped me. He's actually made my transition as a head coach in college because there's so many other things that have nothing to do with just coaching, and he's been around it. So uh, I'm very lucky to have him, and he's an incredible recruiter. What about NIL money? And I know the football guys, man, they got they got a lot going on. Like, are guys making money on your team? Do they get, like, free vehicles? Like, are they hooked up? We don't have a ton of it at, at BU. Um, a lot of the guys will get – their advisors will get them deals, whether it's equipment deals, um, di- little, little different things that they can get anywhere to make them a little bit of money. But actually from our – own like athletic department we don't have a lot of that stuff like we don't have big time football big time basketball uh so it's a little more difficult like some of the big 10 schools that you know they they, they have the big time basketball and football it makes a difference for them but it's not huge in hockey at this point i still think it's going to get bigger but it's not it's never going to get to you know the football or basketball level all right so what's the recruiting like i mean is it super competitive you've got like big time programs right down the road I mean, you're running into those guys all the time, man. So, like, 
it, does it get pretty, pretty like, you know, I mean, like when, when do you get involved? You know, are you involved from the very beginning? Like, do you do home visits? Like you see with football and basketball, like what's it like on, from your standpoint, from a competition standpoint? Yeah, it's, it's very competitive. Uh, um, I mean, I mean, obviously for us, a lot of the guys that we're recruiting, you know, Boston College is recruiting the same guys or some of the Big Ten schools. Um, you know, we've had some battles and it gets competitive, um, but it's fun. It's it's the fun part. It's it's fun to get in these uh, recruiting battles. Uh, I don't think there's as many home visits as there used to be. We've definitely done some, but it seems like it's gone away from that a little bit. A lot of these guys make decisions um, before you even get to that point because it's so competitive. They go on their visits to the schools and then a lot of them, because they're so busy playing hockey, they just want to kind of make the decision and, and then focus on where they're at. Uh, I find I find that's the the biggest difference nowadays. Because when I was went through it, you'd have like five visits, and it wouldn't be until going into your senior year. You'd go visit um, the five schools and then typically make a decision. Some of these guys make a decision before they even come on an official visit, which is crazy. They'll they'll come check it out and. You know, we'll have some Zoom calls or different things, but it's it's a lot different, and these guys make decisions a little different than they used to. So when you uh, when you're recruiting kids, and, and and the superstars are superstars that you know are probably going to jump in and, and be okay, but like maybe like the fringe guys, and you talk to the kid, and he's a good kid, and all of a sudden you kind of meet their parents or something, and you're like, ooh, I don't know if this guy this good kid. Like, do, right? Do you do you go do you base how you evaluate a player by talking to his parents and whatnot? No question. A hundred percent. That's a, that's a huge part of it. Um, you know, we have typically when we bring a kid in, it's typically with at least one or a lot of times it's both their parents. And I think you learn a lot from just how they interact with their parents, how their parents are, um, you know, what their parents expect. Um, how it, it's, it's, uh, it's eye opening. So there's no question that we're not just recruiting the kid, you know, we're, we're recruiting the family as well. And, you know, we're certainly looking to have good families and good people um, at BU. So there's no doubt that's part of it. Like we look at that very closely. Okay. Now listen, I, what, if, what if there's a kid like you really want and the dad's like, all right, we'll come, but you got to take his younger brother also. Ooh. Or his like cousin. Or like imagine Andy's my brother and you're or like, his, we got to take or, him too. Or his neighbor. <laughs> And you're like, uh, and he can't play at all. Like, I mean, but the other kid is like, um, are you willing to make some concessions and be like, oh, okay, well, we'll take little Johnny too. We'll take your neighbor. If it means we're going to get so-and-so. We'll then do we'll, the charity case. We'll take them both. Yeah, no, it's it's tough to to do that. You, you do not want to get into that game. So um, we we have not done that, and hopefully we don't have to do that. I will say this. We do have we, we do have, we do have three sets of brothers here. You do. I know you yeah. do, man. It's yeah, yeah. funny. And but they're they're all they're really all, good. They're players. all quality players, though. They're That's all the difference. yeah. They're all quality players and uh, all quality people too, which is huge for us. So we, we haven't had to go down that road, and I don't think we're going to go down that road. Um, I don't I don't think it's a good recipe. You'd be like, oh my god, man! Come we'll take on. the whole family. <laughs> I want I want his sister to play. I'm the <laughs> no power shit, play man. too. <laughs> so you dominated college, man. Like you're scoring goals, you're doing your thing, and all of a sudden you get to the pro, and like now you're just like this defensive like uh, crazy person blocking shots doing everything right you know out against the best players on uh, on on the other team like how'd that transition happen that's a good question I I don't know if it's um you know you know you played in New Jersey I don't know if it was from going into the devil system and and how they played uh and then I think for myself personally recognizing that um not everyone can be, you know, a top six forward. Not everyone's going to play on a power play. Um, so I kind of, when I got in there, I kind of had a role pretty early on that kind of showed what type of player I maybe was going to be with killing penalties and uh, playing against the other team's top players. And I understood that if I want to play in this league and stay in this league, I'm, I'm going to have to be good, good in my role. So I think that's kind of, kind of how it, went down. Um, and I think too, for me being an offensive player in college, and then it being a little bit different at the pro level, I think too, you lose a little bit of confidence offensively when you, when you're kind of playing a more defensive role. Um, but I, I, I was very fortunate to play in a great organization. Um, when, when two Stanley cups, and I'm certainly not going to complain that I didn't score enough. Um, that, that's for sure. But right. there were, there were times definitely where, you know, you second guess yourself. Like I used to be a pretty good offensive player. What the hell happened? But then you realize too, you're you're in the best uh, league in the world, and there's some pretty damn good players out there. And you want to be part of it. And 
that's kind of really how it happened. I just never really found my offensive game in, in, at the NHL level, but still had a pretty good career and uh, proud of it. You're on some good teams too, man. You know what I mean? You're yeah, on some we had, good we some, teams. Yeah, we had some great teams. It was, it was um, no question, very fortunate to get drafted by the Devils. And especially during that time period, um, you know, we, we had some great teams. It was, it was a lot of fun. And you know it. Um, it really was. like It was about the team. Um, that, that was part of it. Uh, that's kind of how Lou uh, did things, and um, you know he's he's pretty impressive for you know how he built his teams, and it was all about winning. And, and you know we we all know how Lou is, so um, I was very fortunate to to be part of it. All right, what do you take from Lou? Because I noticed yeah. you were like you know several minutes you you were ready to go when the meeting when when this uh, interview <laughs> was set to take place. I mean, most guys are coming on like last second. You're yeah, like he's ready in the waiting room like several minutes in advance, man. So. But, like, uh, the shaving, all the stuff you hear about from, like, Lou, just the, the overall discipline, like, do you, do you carry over some of that? Yeah, no question. I think just, like, I think for Lou, it was always about all, like, the little things um, add up to, the, to make a huge difference in the, in the big things and in the big moments. I think that's what, you know, I learned from him and learned from the Devils organization. Um, it's just really about the little things. If you do the little things well, you know, a lot of times good things are going to happen. And I think that's what I took from him and we try to do a lot of those things here at BU. And it was like that too, for me, when I was at BU, Jack Parker was uh, very similar with some of those things uh, with the details uh, that, that really matter. Uh, I actually saw Lou the other day at the, um, I was at the U S hockey hall of fame dinner. For, uh, right. It was in Boston and Jamie Langenburner. So I was there to, for, for him and it's great to see. And I'm telling you, Lou, like, I mean, he's gotta be 81, 82. <laughs> He looks exactly the same. I know. Like it was great to see him. Like it's, it's so impressive that he still looks like he did, you know, twenty years ago. It's it's amazing. Sipping on hot water, just sips oh, yeah. hot water the whole time. Loves he's doing he's doing water. great and he's doing great in, in 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 Long Island. I mean, especially this year, he's doing doing pretty damn good, man. So yeah, we lo- we love Lou. You know how it is. So uh, he, he's hardcore. He's he hardcore. Is, He's hardcore, but then, you know, Danny too, like he'd do, that guy would do anything for you. Holy smokes. Like he's, he's loyal to, till the end. I will say this when I was in the locker room, like just kind of just keeping my I had rabbit ears up and hearing the older guys shoot the shit. And I remember being young and everybody talks about how underrated you were. And they always pump your tires up when you weren't around. Like God, Jay Pandolf was, God, he, 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 you know, he deserves so much more than this. Like, like, do you look back on that? Like, you know, I did, I did a, I did a lot for this organization. You might be one of the most unappreciated guys in that whole organization. Like, how do you, how do you look at that, man? Uh, I don't know if I really ever think about it like that. Uh, to be honest, like, I, I don't know. I, 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 I really enjoyed my time there. I enjoyed all the guys I had the opportunity to play with. So I never really thought about it. To be quite honest, um, I was just happy to be on a team that could actually have a chance to win a Stanley cup uh, and to be able to do it and to be able to do it twice. Um, I never even really think about it too often, but sometimes when you sit back and have a chance to, and, and recognize how hard it is to win. And I was fortunate to do it twice. Like I, I think I feel like I owe a lot to the, the devil's organization and that's who drafted me. That's who gave me the opportunity Um, And Lou over the years was uh, very good to me. Um, So, uh, you know, I I never really felt like I was underappreciated. Listen, man, you first come in and like you've got guys like Billy Guerin there and and Brian Ralston, Dave Anderchuk. I think Dougie Gilmore may have been there like your first couple years or Mm -hmm. whatever. He was in New Jersey, man. You know, in addition to like Danico and Scott Stevens and all these guys, like how how were the the veteran guys, you know, with you when you first came on board, man? I mean, who who was a guy that stands out who really – kind of took you under your or their wing yeah there was a lot of them which i think that's just how they were and, and probably i'd say the first one that was probably billy garen um we had the same agent so right away he was he, he was having me over his house all the time um for dinner uh with his family which was awesome he was having me out for lunch uh you know back in the day it was a little different after practice you, you know you go for lunch and have a couple beers or whatever so he was always making sure that I was around and and part of it so he was he's the one that sticks out to me the most uh right off the hop but there was a lot of guys like Scott Niedemeyer was another one because he was a younger guy so he he was great to me Rolston same thing he was a college guy there was so many uh Dave Anichuk I lived with uh, or sorry not lived with room with my first um 
a little bit and he was a treat that guy he's as old school as they get um what a guy what a teammate um so he he was great to me as well so I just kind of followed him around and and kind of watched what he did and um it, it was easy to kind of figure out what it took to be a pro um he was a pro in in, in every way and, and back then obviously it was a little different the way guys did things but um you know I certainly appreciated learning from some of those guys so we'll give Bob Murray a shout out by the way your agent we got to give him a shout out Billy G, oh, yeah, Bob, big big Waltz oh, agent, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, Bob's the best. He was he was awesome. Um, he I mean he used to get a lot of the local players around Boston, so he he was great to me. Obviously, great to Billy, great to Keith, great to a lot of guys. So oh, yeah, he's 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 slowly gotten out of the business. Um, but he had, he had a great career. He he was incredible. He was one of the first, you know, around here, one of the bigger agents. Yeah, I just talked to him like uh, a lot this past summer because he's Kevin Hayes' agent, man. I said it's right. been a long time, you know. So yeah. he, he's got all those all the Boston connections. Yeah. He hey, did. hey, what about Dano? Like when I when I got into the league, he was still at training camp, but he retired before I, I made the team. Like, but didn't you hear stories about Dano back in the day where you just bring his little toothbrush and put it in the front part of his suit jacket? Like, was he wild <laughs> at the beginning when you played with him, or is he calm calm down, Dano, at that point? He was more calm down, Dano, at that point um, when I was there. Still, still like nuts in a way, you know, Dano. Yeah. Like he, I just remember, and I think it, I forget who was with me. It was a, another younger guy, and you know, I think we you you walk. Like, he just had this personality, but in, in a loud, loud voice, like deep voice, um, had a presence about him. And I remember one time, I think we walked into the bathroom. I don't, I don't know if he was coming out of the shower or whatever. He had a towel on, but. He's looking in the mirror, he's flexing, and he's talking to himself, and he'd just be sitting there saying, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? How do you look this good at this age? <laughs> like, and and he, he would just, he, he was trying to get a rise out of guys, but he was so funny with little things like that he would do, and um, I had so much respect for that guy, how hard he played, I um, mean, for, for how long he played. I mean, that guy left it out there every night, and he's like really the guy that he's, I don't know if you call him Mr. Devil, but just the way they played and the way the organization was like, he was a big part of it. He was one of the first guys there. And um, I, I had a, I had a great time with Dano and he, another guy that was great to me. We spent a lot of time together and had a lot of fun together. Yeah. He's doing good now, man. I like listening to him break Lou, everything down. Lou would do like, he would do like crazy things. He'd like fire coaches towards the end mm. of the year. Like, I mean, and, and then like when you guys are in a decent position, right? Like a good position. Call Julian. And and then you still go on to like win the Stanley Cup. I think Larry Robinson, right? He took over, and you guys ended up winning the cup with with Big Larry behind the bench. But like as players, how do you like handle that? Like when something like that goes down, like is it a complete shock? Do you ever see something like that coming? And and collectively, how do you guys handle that? Yeah, I don't know if you ever like see it coming, but then I think you're also never surprised with what Lou may do. I think for Lou, he, he just if he feels that. Uh, something's not working right and he feels like it's going to affect, affect the team fr from winning, he'll make a change. I think he, once he feels that way, he's just going to make the change and, and he'll live with the uh, consequences. I think that's kind of how he does things. Um, I think he is pretty thoughtful on how he does it, but then once he's made that decision, he, he's going to make the decision and live with it. And in 2000, um, I, I don't remember exactly what place we were in. We're, we're certainly right up there uh, when Robbie Fatora got let go. And Larry took over. And I think when Larry took over, too, we may, may have had like eight games left. And it, we weren't like lighting the world on fire either. I think we may have went four and four uh, before the playoffs started. But, you know, it ended up being the right move at that time. Um, and Larry did a tremendous job. And, you know, that certainly looked good for, for Lou that, that he made the right decision. And then he did it again with uh, Claude uh, in 05, 06. And, he just felt like something was off where he, he didn't think we could we could win or he didn't like the feel of the team and he decided to to make a change. He, he he'll do it at any, at any point and that's kind of I think how he's always done things. If he feels like something doesn't look right or feel right, he, he's going to make a change and, and that's kind of how he does things. But as players, I think when you're there for a long time, you're not surprised. You, you just know that if he has a feel, he's he's going to make a certain change, whether it's a trade or, or a coaching change. I think I was there for 
13 years and I don't want to count the coaches right now, but th- there had to be 10, if not more. Oh my God. Were you surprised with the Julian one though? And I was a young kid, so I didn't really understand what was going on, but like we were kicking ass. I thought he yeah. was great. And all of a sudden he's fired. Like, did you guys know that was going down as an older group or were you like, God damn, what happened? I, I, we were a little bit surprised. Um, yeah, I, I was, you know, we were, we were in first place. I'm pretty yeah. sure at that point. Um, yeah, we were going pretty well. I think we'd yeah. won the game before too, before you get let go, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I, I was a little surprised at that one, but again, like I said, not, not shocked. Uh, Lou must've felt something wasn't right with the team. And, and, and again, you know, he made the decision to make a change. Um, I'm sure if you talk to Lou, on certain things he looks back on, maybe he would have, would have done something different. But yeah. at the time, he's going to do it and he's going to live with it. All right, listen, as a coach, people always talk about the Devils and and their defensive system. And, you know, Marty, obviously one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest goaltender of all time. Some people, like, feel like, you know, he benefited also from, like, the way they play. Like, like break down how they play like is it is it an unfair way to like analyze the team do you would, did you enjoy playing on that type of system would you ever like implement that with the way you play like what was the style like help us understand that yeah i think when jock lemaire was there it was that's he's the one that kind of brought yeah. the trap to the devils um where it was a little bit more sit back but I feel like when Jacques left, it was a little bit different. Like, I think we started playing more aggressive, like no question with Larry and um, with Pat Burns, uh, maybe with Pat a little bit again, where, you know, he really liked the one, two, two, um, you know, m- making sure that you're on the defensive side of the puck all the time. Um, but I still think some of those years we, we had some pretty good offensive teams and I don't know if people realize how good we were offensively. I, I think the year, 2000 with um you had the Arnott Elias the core line is one of the best lines in the National Hockey League offensively you had Gomez McGillney um we had a ton of offense uh, I just don't I think people always thought back to the 95 uh devil team that won yeah. that you know trapped it up and uh played a little bit more defensive but I thought as it moved forward with different coaches uh we, we still played um an offensive game uh, I think we just always still to the devil's roots made sure we were really good defensively. And I think that was a big part of it. And I think that's kind of was always kind of the structure with the devils is that they were a defensive team first. Hey, so that 2000 year, was that when Scotty Stevens was at his like craziest meaning knocking guys out? I feel like every time I look up his hits, you're involved in it. You're the guy <laughs> back checking, pressuring the guy to go towards Scotty and all of a sudden he fucking kills him. Like, tell us about that run because he knocked out some cats in that in a couple of those series. Yeah, he was. I mean, I think every series he had knocked at least one guy out. Yeah, and and God. I don't know if there'd be suspensions nowadays or not, but he never had his elbow up. He always you know hit with his shoulder. He always went through the chest first. Uh, his timing on hits was was excellent. Uh, I'm sure he crossed the line on a few, but he um, he was just you had to know when you were out there against them. And if you had the puck and we're going to go through the middle of the ice, then the, there may be some consequences. And for Scotty, his timing was excellent. And, and for Scotty too, he was so competitive and he wanted to make an impact on, on, on a series. And he certainly did like the bigger the game, um, the more Scotty I felt like stepped up and the more competitive he was and the harder he was to play against. And he got the hardest matchups every single night. And, some huge guys he played against that he had to deal with. And, and you know, Scotty, like he's a, he's a freak uh, physically. Uh, he's a physical freak. He's just a specimen and he's strong and he's competitive and, he, and he's hard to play against. And he, he could make an impact um, in a series w- with one hit. And I think the other team realized, um, you know, <laughs> we better be careful when we're out there against this guy. And he was never, he never took a shift off and was never easy to play against. And I think that's kind of how our teams were back then. I think he was like chopping wood when we had him on. Oh no, like, he's a mountain like, 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 re- like yeah. wrestling bears or something, whatever he was doing when he, when he came on with us, but give me the one hit you remember the most that it was like, this may be the hardest hit I've ever seen ever. Which one was it? I, I remember the one, the most is the Lindros hit. Um, I, yeah. I was, I was like tracking Lindros back. I was back checking <laughs> yes, him you were. and I actually saw Scotty coming. I actually took a little bit of the, I mean, I was yeah, protected yeah. by Lindros. He took most of it. But uh, I was tracking back, and I just remember that one the most. And I think just because of Lindros was coming back from injury anyways, and, um, you know, 
Scotty ended up obviously getting him pretty good there. So that that's the hit I remember the, remember the most. He's a quiet guy though. Like people think that maybe he's a rah rah kind of dude, but he certainly wasn't. No, he was. Um, there were times when you know he felt like it was the right time to speak up, but more often than not, he just he led by example and he led with his actions and just his look. That that's all it took. I think you knew before a game just by looking at Scotty that well, I better be ready tonight because look at him. You know, it was it went a long way. Could you imagine in today's game a player like? taking that hit like Korea did and then coming back. Oh. They wouldn't even let him back in the game. Yeah. They'd be like, you no need ch- to sit yeah. for like three weeks. <laughs> you know, yeah, no right chance. So. No chance. I think if you ask Paul too, I think he came back and scored an unbelievable goal. Unbelievable. I, I, I don't even think he remembers it uh, from he what I had heard. Yeah. So yeah, that was, that, that one was, that one was tough. Um, you know, a ton of respect for Paul Korea. I actually played against him in college. He was ridiculous how good he was. Uh, but I think that was a that was a tough hit for him, and um, you know he he was he was such a good player. Obviously, was affected by some concussions, which is uh, obviously unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, he's still affected by that. That thing. main team was unreal, yeah. though, right? With Jimmy Montgomery unreal. and those guys, Scotty Pellerin too, right? Scotty, they they were they were really good. Like they, they're both goalies, Scar Snow and, and Mike Dunham. Never mind, <laughs> forget forget everyone else they had. Just the goaltending alone was was incredible. It, it was it was a lot of fun because. When I was at BU, Maine was probably one of our bigger rivals. BC was down a little bit when I was here, and uh, Maine had some water. They have some good teams, and with, and with Paul Career, they were they were unreal. I think they lost one game that year. I think we actually ended up beating them up in Maine. That was the only loss they had, but they they were they were they were a wagon. Hey, this might be a weird question, but like um, when you were going to training camp in two thousand one, when nine eleven happened, were you in Jersey when that went down? Yes. Really? We were, we were, it was the first day, you know, the, the first day we have physicals and everything yep. um, at South mountain arena. Yep. And we were there and, you know, all of a sudden the, the TV's on, right. And people started seeing stuff. Um, and it was, it was just a really strange feeling. Um, yeah. So we were, that was the first day of camp when that happened. And then, you know, up in um, where we lived in New Jersey, right. You could oversee the, um, yeah the city there and we kind of went up there after to see that just i don't know it's a memory i'll never forget it's um it was just eerie and then also too where there were no planes in the sky remember they just they, they had some of the fighter jets going just you don't i guess realize that but around new york new jersey this planes all overhead non-stop right so it's just a just a strange day and a strange feeling a sad day and um yeah uh, it's that was that was something I'll, I'll, I'll never forget and obviously no one will but it was um it was the first day of camp and and for me too, it was uh, about three hours later, got a call from my brother who was at BU at the time. And he knew that Mark Davis was on one of those flights because um, Mike Davis was the assistant coach at BU at the time. And I had played with uh, Mark and Mike. Um, and, you know, getting that news after the fact was just, um, you know, tough, really tough. Man. So. Damn, dude. Damn. Um, Man, that's crazy, especially being that close to it and then knowing people. I know. I know. Hey, what happened with your buyout? Like, were you shocked by that? Like, all of a sudden you get bought out of your deal, and then now you, the last couple of years you got to go into camp on PTOs and stuff like that. Like, was that something you saw coming? You had so much history and championship pedigree with the organization. Did that kind of like upset you at the time that you had to kind of deal with that? Yeah, no. Um... So I, I was, I, I, that last year that I played in New Jersey, I had some, I had like a, I got dislocated shoulder and then I probably should have had surgery, but tried to play the rest of the year with it. That certainly didn't help me. Um, the devils were having some cap issues at that time, like big cap issues. So I had some conversations with Lou and the original plan wasn't to buy me out. He was just trying to think of some different options. Um, I actually ended up uh, with Bob Murray, we actually ended up asking for the buyout uh, and thinking that I was, you know, going to be able to get signed. I was coming off shoulder surgery, but maybe someone else would sign me and no one did at, at that point. So I ended up taking just some time off and um, rehabbing and I started, you know, I didn't know if I was done or not. Um, you know, as a player, you want to play as long as you can. So I, I decided to, you know, train and see if I could get back going there and then, it wasn't until the following year. I actually sat out a year. I played a few games in Springfield in the AHL that year after. Now it was only like maybe 10 games. And then I kind of just took a break for a while. I didn't see much happening. I still didn't feel great. So then I decided probably about a month later to 
I wanted to give it one more shot. So I basically trained for like six months. And then the Islanders gave me an opportunity to come in on a PTO. So that's kind of how that happened. I ended up making the team and played there for a year, which was a you know great experience. Um, they had a lot of young players that were up and coming. Tavares, Ocposo, uh, Matt Mar- A lot of these kids were there. Josh Bailey. Um, so I got to uh, really enjoyed that experience as an older player. Never played for a different organization. So it was um, it was uh, you know certainly different, but I really enjoyed that. I think it, I think you learn from different experiences. So I think that was really good for me. And then next year was the lockout year. So at that point, I went into that not knowing what was going to happen. Um, but I continued training around Boston uh, with a lot of the guys around here. And then as things started getting closer to them looking like we were going to have a season, I was still skating and it was really just a bunch of the Bruins guys that were around. So I was skating with them and Chloe Julian was the coach of Boston at that point. So obviously the season didn't start till January, but Chloe had said to me, um, you want to keep playing? And I said, well, I'm, I'm going to try. I don't know if anything's going to happen. If I don't, I don't. And he said, well, why don't you practice with us? Because who knows with this short a season, it's probably going to be injuries. We don't know what's going to happen. It'd be nice to have a veteran guy around. Um, so I ended up was practicing with them for about a month. And then I think they had a couple injuries and they ended up signing me. So it couldn't have been a better experience for me um, being from Boston, be able to finish there. Um, it was, it was great. And also too, for me to get kind of know the organization a little bit and for them to get to know me and ended up working out that I ended up in player development. So I couldn't have had a better finish, but I do appreciate Claude for that as well. I don't know if, if he wasn't there, if I would have gotten that opportunity. Yeah, no, we've had him on, man. Yep. He's, he was great. We had Cassidy on too, man. He was awesome. Hello. But Hey, John Tavares, like, you know, first overall pick, you know, he just hit a thousand points for his career, uh, within the last couple of days, whatever. So, what were your initial impressions uh, with him? Like, was he quiet? You know, like he kind of comes across like a little like reserved, you know, like what was he like as a young guy, you know, coming in with a lot of expectations? Yeah, he, I would say definitely on the quieter side, um, but he, he would loosen up at times, no question. But I was, I was very impressed with his, his work ethic was off the charts and he was, he was always trying to get better uh, in, you know, all different areas for him. I think at the time, like face-offs, he was a younger guy, centerman, right? It's obviously tough uh, taking face-offs at the National Hockey League level, especially against some of the centers that have a lot of experience. So he was constantly working on his game. Um, I was very impressed with that. He uh, he was, you know, learning to be a leader. He was very young at the time. And that that's a big ask for any young player, uh, especially on a young team. Uh, to be a leader. So he was learning all those things at the time, but I was very impressed with him. He's an excellent kid, uh, but his, his work ethic was off the charts. So really impressed with him. His talent was, is also off the charts as well. How's your young superstar? At BU? Who's that? They get, well, Ma- Mac. Oh, so. Yeah. Scalabrini. He's getting a lot of attention. Uh, rightfully so. Um, he, he, uh, he's, v- I'm very impressed. Very, very impressed. Um, He's 17 years old playing college hockey. Um, it's funny, like we, we'll look at rosters before games, and there's 98s. He's born in 2006. He's playing against oh guys God. eight years older, like wow. on a regular basis. Good um, and Terry, he's a really, <laughs> really, really impressive player. Uh, the big thing for me is how mature he is as a player, as a 17 year old. Um, he doesn't cheat the game at all. Uh, you, sometimes, you know, some of those higher offensive players that are young that you know when they have the puck they're they're obviously electric and can do all sorts of different things what's so impressive about him is when he doesn't have the puck he he defends harder than anyone like he wants to get the puck back he plays the right way he does everything the right way and the other thing about him too which has impressed me is he's probably six one maybe but he's probably about 195 pounds but he is like the furthest thing from a perimeter player like as an off, he is inside the dots, plays in traffic, gets to the net. Um, so that has really impressed me, especially for a younger guy. He's a really strong kid. Um, he, in his preparation up to this point, like this kid is prepared with his work ethic, what he does off the ice, how much time he puts into being a hockey player is very impressive. Um, just from video work, and he coaches himself. This kid, he he recognizes things that he needs to get better at. Um, we have Kim Brandbold's our um, assistant coach here. He worked in Boston with me 
as a, like a development coach and he's excellent at what he does. And he'll come to Kim with certain things that he thinks he needs to get better at. So him and Kim will go over video and they'll watch things over and over. And it's so funny how quick this kid picks things up and recognizes what he needs to get better at. So I have nothing but great things to say about this kid and forget how good a hockey player he is. He's, he's a great person as well. Really coachable. And he's going to be, he's going to be an absolute stud. Wow. So who do you compare him to though? Like, like if you had to compare him to anybody, like who do you, who does he play? Like, is he fast? Is he cane? Is he skilled? Like what, what is he? He's fast. I would, I would probably say like a Taze, Jonathan Taze, Sidney Crosby, like th- those similar to those guys more than like a McDavid or he, he's just, he plays a complete game. Like a, not that McDavid doesn't now at this point, but uh, he already plays a complete game as a 17 year old. I think, Jonathan Taze like or Crosby like uh, as well like he's he's very impressive very impressive wow so Celebrini man man. he's got like 25 points in 15 games too man you're talking like (laughs) as a child as like a 17 year old that's crazy what what and like are NHL teams talking to you all the time like getting your you know input and take on his character and all that stuff yeah yeah no doubt honestly I was talking to um assistant coaches the other day and I I almost just want to send a, uh, an email out to all the NHL teams and just say, it's a no brainer. This kid's this kid's character is off the charts. There's nothing, there's really nothing negative to say. Like he's, um, he's, he's that special a uh, player in person. It, it, I've been very impressed and even more so once since he's been here. Like I, I had a pretty good idea of what type of kid he was. I got to know him pretty well in the recruiting process and what type of family he comes from. Um, but there's there's zero red flags with this kid. He's well, wearing, you should... he's wearing the uh, full cage and the uh, oh, Hockey Canada skates. You yeah. know, he, you can easily pick him out. Hey, man. you need to lie and say, hey, this kid's got a lot of growing to do. He's very <laughs> immature. <laughs> he, he's he, been he, drinking. He needs another year. He needs another yeah. le- year no, or no, two. No, he, needs, he, need, he needs a couple more years. But, he needs uh, me, yeah. damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what about that D-man uh, drafted by Vancouver Wheelander? We're going to see him in the um, in the World Juniors playing for Sweden, man. I I... I I was watching his like videos of him all the time because you know the Blues had a pick, you know, um, and they were looking maybe to go D with their first of three first round picks last year at the draft, and he was getting a lot of attention. It ends up falling a little bit further than I thought he would, man. But people are so high on him. This guy has a ton of potential, doesn't he? Oh, big time, big time potential. Like his, he's got incredible feet. Like he can really, he's really athletic and really skate. Um, he, he's great defensively. Really, another kid that at 18 years old, I can't believe how strong this kid is. Like it's, he's like Janny, like he's, uh, oh. his, he is. Yeah, he I'm is too, a, with hands, 250, with, hand, with with hands, okay, with, with hands, hands, yeah, and sense. No, he's a, he's, he's a very, very <laughs> <Like> everything else, <laughs> Dick. He he's he's really impressive. Like he, this kid is, um, and he, and he loves to defend too, and he loves to be hard to play against. Like he's yeah. he's off the charts competitive, and I think too, if you ask like. Guys in our team, uh, who do you not want to go against in practice? It's Tom. Like he, he's really hard to play against. He's going to be a, a great NHL player. He's going to be a guy that can log big minutes, um, play against the other team's top lines. Uh, he'd probably be a guy. I don't know if he's going to be a first power play guy, but mm-hmm. you know he can contribute on your power play. He gets he get that's the one thing he's excellent at is getting pucks to the net um, without getting them blocked, which is which is a, a great skill to have. Um, so his transition game is excellent. We, we love this kid. He's a he's a character too. This kid. Vancouver has their power play quarterback on the first unit. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, they got one. I don't think he's going to move him out of the way <laughs> anytime but, man, soon. Well, I, I want to ask you about Lane Hudson, though, too, because he's a Montreal pick, and, and you know, you got uh, Tuck, I believe, who's also a Montreal pick. So for the Canadian viewers that we have right now, man, like like pump those guys' tires. Yeah, Lane is um, – he, he's this kid is just fun to watch, like, on, on a daily basis. Uh, he, I don't – it's funny. People ask me who to compare him to, and I'm more of watching, like, Quinn Hughes and some of these guys and, and Adam Fox. Like, he's similar to those guys in the way he plays, but he's still unique in the way he plays. He, he's he's almost like a point guard in basketball, the way he plays. Um, it, it's like he'll, he'll, like, cross guys over it. He'll come up. He'll stop where you don't think he'd stop, and then all of a sudden he gets good. It's just the things he does. It, no it, look it, passes. <laughs> no look passes. He's always two or three steps ahead of, um, everyone else on the ice I and mean, we'll even watch video back sometimes and we'll 
you know, sometimes, you know how it is, like he'll have an open lane and some of the guys on the bench will be yelling, shoot, shoot. And then all of a sudden he hits a backdoor guy wide open for an empty net. He, he just sees things that other guys don't see out there. Um, so he, he is just so fun to watch this kid too. Like talk about another competitive kid. Our practices are, are awesome. The competitiveness oh, of some of these guys. Um, but he's a guy that, I mean, he, he competes so hard in practice. He's obviously not the biggest guy, but he, his competitiveness is off the charts. I think he's going to be a, uh, an excellent NHL player. So uh, Montreal is going to be very happy with, with him. And Luke Tuck is another, another Montreal pick who has really come into his own this year. I think he's battled injuries the last couple of years. It's affected him and maybe the way that he needs to play. I mean, he's, you know, he's a power forward. Um, so he's been excellent this year. He, he's, he's been physical. He, he gets to the net. Uh, he's actually been playing with Celebrini. So he's been making some more plays as well. I think it's given him some confidence and he creates space too for, for Celebrini. And, um, uh, I'm really happy with the way he's uh, progressing and it's going to be another great pick for Montreal. So as a head coach watching video, I'm sure you're just watching video and video, like what, what irritates you the most? Like, I know, you know, everything's different each game, but like, what is it stopping on pucks? Is it getting in shot lanes? Body not, language. Body lane, Like what, what, what pisses you off as a head coach? Yeah. I, I, for me, it's um like not playing, not winning hockey. Like, so, you know, basically end of a period, you're up one, nothing, two, nothing games going pretty well. There's, 40 seconds left. You're, it's a one on four yeah. and you're trying to beat a guy wow. instead of just putting mm. it in and, you know, let, let's get through this period. We had a pretty damn good period. Um, those are the things that irritate me the most. Um, th- those are, and then other things too, where players don't put them, their uh, teammates in a good position um, coming onto the ice. So guys that wow. take long shifts and then trying to go a little bit more on offense. And then all of a sudden, they're going to change on the back check and a guy gets out there and they get those things irritate me more than anything else. Hey, I got to ask you about one more player because uh, we're in St. Louis, but the Dylan Peterson kid, what, what's, what's his upside? How's he doing? Give us an update on him. He got off to an incredible start this year. Incredible start. Um, big power forward can really skate and another really athletic kid, but he ended up blocking a shot against North Dakota and it was like game six or seven and he we didn't realize it he had a small fracture in his foot he played about seven or eight games with it no oh. no one knew and it, it affected him like no question about it um so he, his game kind of fell off a little bit during that stretch but he's going to be healthy going into the second half I, I expect him to have a huge second half like he has nhl talent nhl ability i think sometimes for the bigger guys it takes a little bit longer uh, to find their game and know what makes them effective every single night. And, and he's starting to find that he he was excellent at the beginning of the year. It's really unfortunate that he had that injury. Uh, but I expect him to have a huge second half for us. And, you know, St. Louis has a really good player there. So, okay. Of all the players in their team, like h- how many do you think will get a sniff in NHL? If you had to guess. With our team this year. Um, a sniff, a game. Yeah. With our players, I'd say, let me look at our roster here. Um, <laughs> probably a Celebrini, you know, Hudson. Probably a kid that. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a, there's a, I think there's a lot. Although you have two oh, yeah. Celebrinis and two Hudsons on the team. So. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We got, yeah, I'd say, I'd say 10 that at least wow. get a sniff. Mm. Damn. I'd dude. be surprised if not so with some of these guys. Yeah. Hey, Damn. and I mean this with all, all due respect. Like when you're, Coach in a powerhouse like that, do do I know you got to recruit, but do they call you? Like, I mean, are the are the best players like asking to come play for you at the same time? You know what I mean? I think there's a little bit of that. I think with all the the um, kind of big programs that have a lot of tradition and history, I think you certainly get some more calls than maybe some of the other schools do. So we certainly get some calls at, at times, but. You know, we no doubt still certainly have to put the work in because there's a lot of good programs and there's a lot of good options for players. Uh, and a lot of times they're looking, you know, what's the best option for them? Where do they fit? And but yeah, no, no doubt you definitely get some calls for sure. Hey, have you ever like had a parent call you? I mean, they're like, Jay, so and so needs more ice time. My not- son, 
I do not like the fact that he, who he's playing with. Like, do you still get that? I mean, I know, like, you can kind of separate yourself, but I know junior coaches get it all the time. Yeah. I'm just curious if they can get to the college coach. I would say this <laughs> maybe a little, not not re, not too bad. My assistants maybe a little bit more than me, but I think now, too, like all, every one of these players has an advisor, right? Oh, Everyone yeah. has an advisor now. So you, you're going to get a call from the advisor before a parent in, in most cases. So, But, yeah, you, there's no question you get calls from advisors, no, no doubt about it. Um, yeah, it's I can't imagine back when I when I played here, like my dad even considering calling <laughs> Jack Parker. It would never <laughs> happen. Calling Jack Parker. Can you imagine yeah, that? Never happen. What would it's Jack just, say? Don't ever call me again. I don't know what he would say, but <laughs> my dad would never even even – even think about it so um yeah it's just different it's, it is different nowadays no doubt about it how's my boy scotty gomez you guys still hanging because i know when i when you guys are good buddies your girls yeah. hung out and stuff like that and i was always like wanting to hang out with you guys how's he doing he's doing well he's actually he's coaching up in uh the bc league in surrey oh really yeah he oh, just started there this year yeah he's, he's great he, he, he's loving it imagine the stories he's telling those kids like I know he's, he can hold court better than anyone, but he's yeah. uh, he's doing very well. I talked to him a couple of weeks ago, um, so he he's really enjoying it. Uh, I think he, I don't know if he played there maybe in Surrey when he was uh, younger, but he knows some people there, and I think it's a good opportunity for him. I, I know he loves the game, and he's certainly enjoying it. He wasn't here very long, but he was like coaching when he was here in St. Louis. Oh, he's, he's like so funny. He's dude. like tell you like what's <laughs> wrong with the system and how you guys. He's like, this is what we're doing wrong. This guy needs to be here on the power play. We shouldn't be doing this. We don't. <laughs> he's always like breaking it down. You know, he had a lot of confidence, man. I mean, we Fuck had him yeah. on here, man, and I, I I loved him as a player, especially when he came in with you guys in Jersey, and you know, obviously, you know, when winning a cup and all that, man. He was a great player. Yeah, he was. He was an unbelievable player. He actually should have probably. He was good enough to make it as an 18 year old but back then like you know how it is like with with the devils they really never there's not many guys that never really played in the minors he's one of them scott niedermeyer there's only a handful that never really had to spend any time in whether it was albany or utica wherever they were their farm team was uh, especially with lou and then he did make it when he was a 19 year he he was he had an unreal i think he won rookie of the year he did yeah he did. but his the, i mean yeah. we know gomer like his um just his personality, uh, he, he could get away with things just because he had such a great personality. Mm-hmm. Even with some of the older guys, like he would get on older guys in certain ways and <laughs> you couldn't help but laugh. Like the guys loved him. He, he was he was a character. You need characters too, like to, to win. And um, not only was he a tremendous player, but he he uh, had a great personality and he, he he meant a lot to our team just from that, those side of things, from off the ice stuff too. Like we, we had a lot of fun. So I know, like you, you were always good to me, man. I do want to give you a little shout out for my uh, my first NHL goal. I took a stupid fucking penalty, a, a tripping call. I'm in the box, not going to play the rest of the night probably. I get out of the box, you block a slap shot from the point, and you <laughs> kick it wide to me, baby. And uh, I cruise yeah. down and go top cheese. So I'm give oh. you a little shout out, baby. Thank oh, you so I much. That. Oh, God Ovi, damn right. Ovi was on the ice. For Ovi that. didn't back check. That's <laughs> yeah. before Ovi started back checking. Appreciate that you. School. Was that a slap or two? An old school. God damn right. It was. Damn right. Shelf. Leaned like into Mike it, baby. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Thank you for that. I do Boston. remember that. That was that was awesome. That was fun to be a part of. Hey, that. when you're coaching in Boston, like a few more things for you, man, and yeah. we appreciate yeah. it. But like you're coaching in Boston, like what are you taking away from guys like Bergeron, Marshan, those guys? Marshan never do anything crazy where you guys like, as coaches had to like deal with that. And Cassidy, man, like he just speaks the game so differently. Like we had him on too. Yeah. Awesome conversation. We just had Dean Evison on and, and like he's like he's the hardest coach to coach against because he's always so on top of things, you know, but like a brilliant hockey mind, but just coaching those legendary players, Chara, all those guys, man. Like, like what was that like, you know, kind of, you know, going to work with those guys every day? Yeah, it was, it was incredible. Um, Just the culture they kind of built in Boston, uh, those guys, uh, just how they did things every day. It reminded me a little bit of the devils, uh, quite honest with you, with some of the guys we had there similar where, they really, really cared about their teammates and and that's for, for top end guys like that, high end guys to care about everyone that comes into that organization. It goes a long way. And, and they cared about winning, winning for the team that they, they sacrificed certain things uh, for the betterment of the team and, and Char and Bergeron and Marsh and how they, you know, prepared and, and practiced every day. It, it was very impressive, very impressive. So I learned so much from those guys. It was a great experience to be able to coach them. And the other thing too, you learn from those guys too, is, is they, they want to be coached. They, they don't think they have all the answers. 
Mm. I mean, those guys had so much experience, had won Stanley Cup, but they still want to be coached on a daily basis, which is very impressive. They were never too too big to think they were too or too good to think they they can't still be coached. So that that's the one thing that really stuck out about those guys. And uh, Bergeron is uh, and Char all of them were, you know. I can't say enough about, about those guys, how impressive they are as teammates and as leaders. And uh, if you, if you're in that locker room and not learning from those guys and there's something wrong with you, so I think it, I, I've never been so impressed by a group of guys and kind of what they built. And, and when, when you're in that environment, it's, it's pretty easy to coach because they do such a good job of handling uh, the locker room and the accountability. It comes from them. When it comes from within like that, yeah, you, you're going to have some pretty good teams, especially when you have that talent around. Hey, you mentioned Lachetti, but I mean Eichel, Keller, Brady, Kachuk, McAvoy. I mean, you you got all these guys sprinkled throughout the league who have BU connections. Like, like, do you do they do they stay connected with the program? Is it important that the program stays connected with them and their presence is there? And the guys that are in the room right now know who wore the jersey before them. Like, how much do you remind them of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're, they're all still involved. They're all still a part of it. Um, we certainly reach out to them. We'll, we'll have, if they're around, they'll come in and speak to our team. Uh, a few of them have done that. And I think that goes a long way. Uh, McAvoy did it uh, recently. He actually did the lineup recently too, which was kind of fun. He? <laughs> uh, he was pretty funny too. He had the whole thing planned out. I sent it to him in the morning and he he was awesome. And I think the guys really appreciate that. Um, you know, we're fortunate here that we have, I think, four guys on the Bruins that played at Boston University. We got Grizzlick. Coil, McAvoy, and Shattenkirk. So that, that's pretty special too to have that uh, right here. But th- those guys, um, I think they were proud to play here, all of them, and you know they're still a big part of it. So it's it's great to have those guys, and it's great to have them sprinkled throughout the National Hockey League. And a lot of them are pretty damn good players too, which is awesome to see. Pretty damn good. Hey, how old are your kids that are playing? I have a 14 year old uh, boy. I have a 10 year old daughter and a nine year old son. So they're nice. all playing. So it's. Uh, Keeps me busy, that's for sure. Do you feel like the uh, the schedule for a college coach, like you have more time to like watch games and go see your kids play versus being a, even an assistant at the NHL level? Like, is there time to do any of that? Oh yeah, it's it's completely. I, I have a lot of time, which is great. Like on we don't on Sundays we're, we're off pretty much every Sunday yeah. throughout, and you know how it is. There's a lot of youth hockey games on Sundays, so I get to a lot of those games, and then even Saturdays at time if we have a seven o'clock game and my kids have a game at like one or two, I'll, I'll sneak out to go watch that before I have to come back to the rink. So I get to a lot of the games. I get to a lot of their practices and in playing it and you know, coaching at BU, like the travel is you have like one or two trips a year, everything else, all these schools are within, within an hour or even less. So it's um, you're in your bed every night. It's just a different lifestyle. Obviously it's still a grind with certain things. And you know, when you start the recruiting process and you got to get on the road a little bit more, but it's really nothing like uh, the national hockey league. It's a little different. Hey, last thing you guys fly private. And I keep seeing all these locker room tours. Like what are the, facilities like at BU are they pretty like I mean up to date and and like these kids have an unbelievable like everything it, you know they can do whatever they want they got everything at their beck and call there or what yeah well they would certainly have a pretty damn good setup here but it, this rink again this arena where I'm at is um it's almost 20 years old so and the weight room's been updated and stuff like that which is great the weight room's incredible um but the, the locker room probably at some point in the ho- hopefully not too distant future probably needs a refresh just some of these other programs some of the locker rooms are incredible so that that's maybe yeah. the next thing we'll be looking at so we certainly need to win hopefully to, to get that sort of stuff done but um yeah these guys have it have it pretty good and in our arena too like there's not a lot of other things that go on here from like a concert standpoint once in a while there's no basketball here so our guys have access to a lot of ice they can come train anytime they want and their dorms are you could throw or throw a rock from where they live to where the rink is so these guys are spoiled that way. And these guys, you know how it is. They, they love spending time at the rink and they, and they love being together. And um, it, it's awesome to see. So even nowadays, which I can't figure out, I see guys, we have like a lounge where this guy's studying in there. It wasn't like that when I was here. These guys are, these studying. guys are good. Oh yeah. That's what you said. Hey, hey, that's what they tell yeah. you. Game film? No, no, I think they actually are. Some of these guys, it's, it's impressive. It's impressive. So um, it's, it's great to see that. 
Hey, listen, all you boosters, you're listening. Yeah, dude. Hey, get these yeah. guys a new dresser room. Get Let's off your go. wallets. Let's go. We'll write an emails. <laughs> go write a check, man. Pando, you're the man, dude. Hey, tell your brother we said hey, too, by yeah. the way. He's an I awesome will. guy as well, man. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. yeah. Hey, thanks for doing this, you're man. You're the man, Pando. And, and best awesome. of luck the rest of the way, and and we'll be watching, man. Keep doing what we'll you're keep, doing. Yeah, we'll keep tabs thanks, on you. Guys. Thanks, right, man. Pando. Appreciate it. Okay. Be cool, homeboy. Thanks, See you guys. The Camus Strip Podcast is brought to you by Bellman. B E H L M A. N N Bellman Automotive, located where? Troy. Troy, Missouri. Buick GMC on one side of the street, right on the other side, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Get yourself some new wheels in time for the winter. All right, that was Pando. Pando. Great, great guy. Who's great to me? What a gig. Well, he's a two time Stanley Cup winner, played over 800 games. Like, He's going to get a job. He was a superstar at BU. No, 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 no. Should he be looking for a job? Like, would you want that job? What do you mean he's going to get a job? What kind of job are you talking about? Like an no, NHL I head coaching you said he's guy? got a great gig. I go, well, he's a two-time Stanley like, Cup Oh, you're saying get... those guys are going to. Yeah, like you're yeah. a two-time Stanley Cup He was an assistant with Boston Bruins and stuff yeah. like that. But I'm From saying. From Boston, he dominated BU. Yeah, but like, what, what I'm saying is you're, you're there. I'm a little disappointed to hear that the locker room is not great. I know. Like, let's go. Like, BU, guys. There's a face yeah. of your sports. You've had you got like the NHL sprinkled with, you know, superstar players. I no guess shit. how many alumni have come through there? A ton. And yeah, fix their locker fix room. Fix their up. locker cheap room. Cheap asses. Up. Let's go. Now it's not Pando. Well, actually, Pando did kind of say that. Yeah. But I'm calling you guys cheap asses. Because let me say this: these kids nowadays, like, I, they don't give a shit as much about the history as maybe they once did before. When they go on these visits and they see these incredible facilities and these locker rooms and all the amenities and whatever, and listen, they're taken care of pretty nicely in uh, in Boston. in Boston. Yeah. Okay, they got everything. But you know, when you get you know, you see some of these series that are out there, you know, showcasing the different dressing rooms and stuff like that. Like you want to be part of the mix, Andy. And I don't care if you're Notre Dame, you know, in football. Or Florida State or Alabama. If you have shitty facilities, man, they're going to go elsewhere. If anybody that's in charge, an AD of a big organization like that, as far as BU, and their rebuttal to people saying we need new locker rooms, like, there's history in this locker room. That just means you're cheap. No one gives a fuck about the history in a locker room. Fix the damn locker room up. We need a better hot tub. We need better cold tubs. We need more room for this. We need more room for that. More space for this. It helps everybody out. No, but the locker room's historic. No one gives a shit. No one cares. Fix it up. You're basically a professional. They're like, Mike Arruzzioni sat in that same stall. Don't care. I love him. We interviewed him. No, we need nicer stalls. Scott Lachance sat there. Cares. Scotty Lachance. I played with him in Jersey. Oh, Big Walt sat in that same stall. Don't want it. Get rid of it. We need something nice. Hey, and and all y'all need to know, especially the executives and the uh, head people at BU, like Panda Huffa was not complaining about no, it. No, 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 no. We no, don't want no, them to no, think I'm that. No, I'm complaining. We're complaining. I'm saying you guys are cheap. When he said yeah. it's, they have everything at their beck and call, everything they need, but the locker yeah. room's a little dated, we're talking well, that's for ridiculous. Pandolfo. Yes. Your BU hockey, Figure get yourself out. a damn new locker room. Spend the money. You're cheap. Spend oh, the where's money. Where's the boosters? Let's go, Throw some baby. money down on that. These kids are dominating. You're getting the first pick overall. I guess Celebrini. No shit. She's going to go to uh, Lane Hudson. Columbus. Lane Hudson. They're all like brothers on the team. Three sets. Yeah, dude. Pretty cool. You thing. like when I ask them, though, like, if, 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 I'm, if I'm a dad, I'm like, okay, we've got the number one recruit in the country. Yes, he'll come, but you got to take his brother who can't play. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Would you do it? No. Like, dude, he ain't coming. We'll Fucking, get, we'll no, go, I'll take we'll, him. We'll go no. get the number two player. <laughs> yeah, or I'll I'll take him and I'll sit him every single game and yeah, I won't, he won't put him play. on the roster. He won't play. He won't play. He won't be part of the roster. And he's got to pay. And he's got to pay. <laughs> how much? And he's in the other shittier locker. I'd ask the dad, <laughs> how much money do you have? Yeah, I buy build, us a new locker buy room. Buy <laughs> so Forty million on locker room. Yeah. Come on now. This is us talking, not Pando. No, exactly. Just so everybody. You got knows. average D one programs with state of the art facilities. And this is one of the best. Now, they got a great weight room and stuff like that, so I shouldn't say facilities. Whatever. Fix it's just it. the locker room. The locker room is important. Fix it. Like, Lord. Fix it. Hey, these AAA kids have nicer locker rooms yes, than you. Do. Fix it. Fix it. You're being cheap. Fix it. We boosters. Like all you boosters. Fix it. Booster. First form brought us Jay Pandolfo, Cam. Yep. 
I Again, got the hat right here, firstform.com slash camastrick. They'd never even know I it, I saw man. Big Sal wearing this the other day. I'm like, I got to get me one That's of them. That's sick. doesn't fit your head. Your right head, right. Andy, your head must be really small because you're indenting. I know. The, dude, you can't fit. You can't wear a hat. Why you wear a hat? Your head's too small. Really? Yeah, it's indented. And so is mine a little bit. This it's is just a trucker's this hat. hat. Just no, this hat. I have that same hat, and it fits fine. I know, but it's just this one. It, it must be like no, Andy cause... has a back all the way tight <laughs> because his head's so small. And so like it indents. the last knot. Yeah, so it indents this part of it. Mine's a trucker hat. Look at that. Victor Hockey, I give you a shout-out, What out size too. is that? What size hat is that? Let me put that one on. Like, without <laughs> changing the no. size? Go! Yeah. Go! You're sweating, dude. Go! <laughs> Come on. It's like a beanie. No, you're stretching it. <laughs> God. Put mine on. I just did. No, no, no. Put it on it's again. Gross. No, no, no. Put it on. I, did, I just started wearing. Oh, my God. Look at that. <laughs> you got a tiny head, dude. A lot of brains in there. I don't know. A lot of hockey sense in you there. Yeah, hockey sense. You know. A lot of hockey sense and awareness in that head. You are aloof to a lot of things that's going on in the world. Well, I told and you about fine. Harambe. It's good to hang I out told with you me. about Harambe. And I'm not right on everything, but I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a grip on what's going on in society. I didn't even not just in the U.S. but around the world too. And I like knowing I that. Not that I'm right on everything. I have a chance to get into the. I have em- an opinion on the everything. Emirates airplanes had existed. Yeah, and they're big and no, they're we'll nice. Talk Jesus about that Christ, they're, they're like, big vessels. So. And he's like, my buddy went on an airplane the other day. That's <laughs> like, who cares? Like, think of other thing. And, and he's a construction worker. Look at these. He's got no socks on. No, they're Lululemon. You got ankle no socks. socks on. He's Lulu, got loafers. Lululemon ankle socks. Andy wears those when he puts puts his loafers on right after he gets out of here to go to the Creep Core Racket Club. Everybody wears loafers. And they have, they have their like uh, sweatshirt like this, around, <laughs> like that. Their sweatshirt like oh that. Oh my god! This Everybody's like talking about like we don't talk With about some, blue like, green, me, 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 green me. shorts or salmon green colored short, shorts. Salmon colored shorts, pink shorts with their loafers on, and they're they're all cheap as fuck too. I don't dress dirty. Like, we don't dress like that. Yeah, you do. It's all good. Then First they, they chirp me. Dot com they slash talk about me the whole time. Use our link. Uh, the Illinois Recovery Center, man. Again, this time of year, we're thinking about all y'all 100%. that are dealing yeah. with it. Deal with. There is somebody that can help you. 1-888-888-7430-971. Again, reach out to me, and, and you can reach out to Cam That's as fine. well. But you guys always know, when you go to Christmas time, again, yeah, take like care you're going to know little Johnny. Yeah. Have fucking cool Kyle. Yeah. The cool cousin. Cool Kyle. Let him, Kyle, if you're out there, man, talk to that kid. Yeah. I'm being dead. I'm not joking with yeah, Andy. No, right. you're not. I'm being dead serious. You know who he is in, 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 in your family. Be the bigger man or girl and go mm-hmm. talk to him. He's fucking, you might think he's weird, but he's going through weird shit. Yeah. He doesn't know how to talk to anybody. Everybody's ignoring him. He gets no attention. And it just amplifies his addiction. Figure it out and go talk to him. Good advice. No, I'm serious. Because if, if I went through that and like my cool cousin Kyle, who's like the Dude, wheel, and he'd come forever, over and talk, I would, I would do anything Every for family him. has that guy. Man. I know. There's always Kyle and there's always a Johnny. There is. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with Johnny. No. He Johnny's sometimes the coolest. Johnny dude. might he turn might... into Kyle, but yeah. ten times cooler. And Johnny sometimes, is the, he's the coolest guy in the family, too, Johnny's, but he's, but he's so jammed up, no one, can, no one knows. Shit. No, he's not yeah. thinking clearly. You know, I had a friend in college who had to take heart medicine, and he would... He would wash it down with whiskey, and I was like, "Ah, oh, dude, I don't know if you should do that." Yeah, that's not good. You know, what else happened? Is he okay? <laughs> oh, I don't know. You don't have to reach if you don't have a buddy that's an alky. You don't have to act no, like you do. He did that. You just don't need to he do had that. Some like issues. we got plenty out no, there, but man. He had some issues. Cool. I, I know, and and hopefully you got help. But like, you don't need to like force the issue. Like, well, time out. I got a buddy here. Like you singing heart hey, medicine. Eight 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 seven four three zero nine seven one. It's all We're good. Thinking about all y'all this holiday yeah. season. Merry Christmas to all you guys. We love all you, by the way. Yes. Victor Hockey. All you blue collar folk yeah. out there. Just like I said, you just want to see your kids have a smile on their face, yeah. man. You, you, you and your wife could sit down and have your coffee, yeah. and you get each other slippers and don't spend any money on. Slippers, but your yeah. kids are happy and Santa. You don't came. buy anything for Kate anyway. Kate can get whatever she wants. Oh <laughs> well, you have to get her something. I'll get her a little this knick-knack. holiday season. A little knick knack. We yeah. we're getting a couch and okay. stuff like that. Okay. Like we we're taking care of like I don't even want my like Laurie's like I haven't got me anything. anything. I'm like just don't. I don't, I don't I got, have money to buy myself anything anymore. I don't have I don't 
I don't want to spend the money. Let's get it I, for the kids. Get, for, get it for our nieces, my dad. Yeah. Yeah. Kate and I could spend whatever we want on okay. anything. Sparks and sparks.com. Okay. Okay. Don't be a Seth. Don't be. Avoid Seth. Get a Sparks this holiday season or get it in time for next season. Like, or for we're not next, talking uh, about Seth at Christmas. Next year. No, we're not, please. We're, he's not Johnny. No, Seth he's is not. Seth is a demon. Yes. Seth is John Wayne Gacy. Like, no, no, Johnny can come. Johnny, I'll hang out with Johnny. All day I need long, to fucking. Sh- I'll help Johnny. Seth, I might fucking throw in the river. Oh, so God. No, seriously. It's for best for society. Please don't. Do I that. might kill the nah, th- I, No, that's too far. He's killing animals. That's too far. Nah, well, if he do- would you throw? What if? What if? Okay, you got to make a choice: Harambe or Seth. I'll kill Seth in two seconds. Over he Harambe. Wants to fucking torture my doggies. He's gonna steal my wife's panties. Over Harambe. Yes. You Harambe said, is. You said always take the human. Not this human. He's not human anymore. Oh he's he's a devil. All right, Sparks. sparks. And I'll put sparks. him in the Mississippi River. Tess on roofing. Tess on roofing. dot com. So all hey, know. tornadoes are coming. This so now you're not. Nah, you're listening, eh? <laughs> now nah, you're listening. Tess on roofing. Tess on. Ask about the Nano Shield. Brett Tess on a real yeah. shit kicker. Shit kicker. Merry Christmas to you, Damn Brett right. Tess on, and all the staff over there. Merry Christmas, guys. We're gonna do the best of. We're gonna do video. We're gonna do. We have so much cool. Bellman, shit. baby. But we got all this coming up. We got yes. Bellman. Oh, best of's coming up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Bellman and Bellman.com. Yeah. Located in Troy. Troy. Um. No. Sushi and water. Swinging dicks. Yeah, I know. Oh, we are we reversing? Yeah, you take the swing. Let me be the nerd. Go ahead. You know what? Do 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 do. You know that guy. He thinks he. You know, I used to beat his ass back in the day. (laughs) That's his shtick. I mean, whatever. I I don't do all that. But you know, they will give you a sushi and flavor. You know where I'm coming from, though. Yeah, I do. Oh yeah, no, those people come out swinging. Oh, they're there. Is that Laura Strickland? Uh-huh. Is that Laura? (laughs) I take. I went to school with Andy in the Parkway back in North. I used to beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> Bellman receiving lots of He's new like, shipments what? right now. Lots of inventory. Buicks, GMCs, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeeps, and Grand trucks. Man. They get good stuff. Big time. Find out what's in or what's coming at Bellman.com, baby. All right. This has been the Cam and Strick Podcast. Our last one of 2023, although we've got the best of coming up. Yeah. This is technically the last one. The last one. So good it's year. been great, and I hope you enjoy all the best ofs that are coming up. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube. Yes. Please subscribe to our YouTube. Follow us on all the social uh, social media channels. Yep. And um, that means Instagram and Twitter and TikTok Facebook, and Facebook that. and yep. everything. And uh, happy holidays. Love you guys. To all of y'all. Peace.